Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Dayang Noriza, uh, Timbalan Dekan Academic International, as well as <laughs> Double Pose. Huh? <laughs> Penderas bagi e-learning. Okay. Uh, also, Puan Rajima, uh, our Penderas for Blended Learning. Uh, very good morning, uh, dear friends. Very good morning, uh, dear colleagues. Uh, we are here uh, from uh, PEP to clarify what's coming up next. Please, come on. Uh, a brief overview of uh, what I'll be covering, just general. After that, the expert will be sharing concerning uh, the different aspect. Hey, Dr. Tan. <laughs> okay, you need my Sifu. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dr. Tan, uh, whatever that we have uh, done okay, until today stands upon the foundation uh, laid up by Dr. Tan Chung Kiong in those days. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Really, really, thank you. Yes. So, please move on. Yeah. Uh, this is a small team, like the last time, still a very small team. <laughs> so, our Timbalan uh, Pangara is uh, Puan Salmi, a veteran. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she will be the very important lady uh, to lead uh, UMS into something called Pembelajaran Teradun Gantian. So she's a pakar. And then we have uh, Amin, our coordinator for blended learning okay, and also training. And we have uh, Point Eugenia, okay, uh, the lady on MOOC and OER. So, uh, Ah, okay. Okay, Okay. It's a handle. Okay, and then uh, we have uh, Faiz over here helping us uh, with technical support, and the rest of the team are not here. Uh, PEP, the Ketua Penjabir, is actually uh, Encik Wajir, and we have uh, Alex as well as Fazil. Okay, move on please. Uh, E-learning coordinators uh, to support and to execute all our action plan. And over here, we have our point Rajima as well as uh, Dr. Dayang. Thank you so much <laughs> for all the coordination. Okay, move on please. Our mission and our uh, vision, so all of them are aligned uh, with our Malaysian education blueprint as well as our Japan 2.0. Okay. Uh, all in all, we hope that the e-learning environment, the landscape uh, for uh, related to technology and urban learning, have been ever changing. And you know, the latest we might have heard is the ministry is trying to introduce something called uh, to you. To each. <laughs> so, something new is all the time uh, moving, huh? dynamic. So, we have to adapt to it. Okay, go on, please. Uh, this PowerPoint slide should be uh, given to everybody. So, there's a link over there if you want to explore uh, what are the strategic plan. We have seven of them. And what are the 20 action plan that's been prepared for all of us as well as our students. Uh, they are all listed there. You can spend time to explore it. Okay. If there's any suggestion, we are all the time open okay, for improvement and for critique and so on. Move on. Please. This is the Malaysian Education Blueprint and I am not too sure how many of us have ever opened it up. Um, this particular one has got a very important diagram so on the right hand side is the graduates that the ministry expect, okay? And the enabler uh, to bring out, to realize these graduates is five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And our business is in number nine, GOL, Globalized Online Learning. Okay, so whatever we do actually is in accordance with that. For detail, you can just uh, go for this MEB. Huh? Okay, move on. This is the depan that we're talking about. That's how it pembelajaran negara 2.0. New one will be coming up very soon. But it is based upon this that we have our KPI. Okay, uh, so Dr. Tan, this is the same one. 
uh, the MOOC, the blended learning, the OER is all from here. Okay, move on. So again, the link, the QR code is there. Just go in and at least have a glance through, you know, that whatever we do is actually berdasarkan depan 2.0. Okay, what is? And this is the three KPI, uh, blended learning, as well as MOOC and OER. Move on. Okay, so this is the KPI for blended learning. And in this graph, the blue line, the blue line actually indicates the sasaran, the target for national level. So to the last uh, sesi, 2021-2022, the target for national target was uh, 60%. UMS, we hit 97%. Like wow. So, congratulations all. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, UMS, uh, you know, to all the support of all the staff, uh, somehow we made it. Yeah, so congratulations. <laughs> okay, move on. And, yeah, to FPP, last semester, uh, semester one, semester two, we hit 100%. So, congratulations, everybody. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay, move on. Uh, this is FPP, okay, so have been uh, doing very well. Okay, move on, please. So that is actually the blended learning uh, KPI, where we are doing very well uh, in terms of uh, UMS as well as FPP. So the question is, what next? What next? Uh, the type of blended learning we have been using is something called uh, Pembelajaran teradun sokongan. We are supported actually by online activities. But now, we are going to move on to something better, more flexible, uh, that will suit the need of actually our academic staff. And that is Pembelajaran teradun gantian. Uh, afterwards, Puan Sami will give us the detail on actually how to meet the need of uh, this so-called PTG, uh, gantian. You will love it. As especially as academic, you know, we have more flexible of time to do our other work. Okay. This is the OER and uh, baliknya, yeah. So the OER is an open educational resources uh, that have been uh, prepared for all of us. And this OER uh, repository you can see uh, JTMK is uh, taking care of it, as well as uh, Commonwealth of Learning uh, came in to actually optimize it. It is very robust, it meets international uh, standard, and whatever that we upload into OER at UMS, it will be picked up by Google Search and it will be picked up by Google Scholar. What does it do? It increases the visibility of UMS as well as our academic staff. Okay, so this is one place for us to increase the citation uh, among our work. Whatever you upload there will be reported in the SMPPI and then you go to article and then it is, uh, you put it under non-index, non-index. So, setiap OER is 0.25. If you have uh, 5, it is uh, 1.0, which is equivalent to almost a high impact journal article. Okay? So, grab the opportunity uh, to gain more marks. And for this, afterwards, uh, Pon Eugenia will show you what are the rules that you need to follow so that it can be verified as an OER. The verification is not done by us, it's done by Pandabi. Okay, move on. Yes. Okay, so concerning the uh, copyright, huh? Yeah. yeah. So Dr. Crispina is discussing about the copyright and this is where afterwards uh, Eugenia will tell us. No? Basically, everything that is uh, by default uh, available online are all copyrighted. And it simply means whatever material that you want to use, even if it's an image, you need actually the approval from the author. Isn't it? Copyright means uh, it's copy fully copyrighted. So the copyright... Uh, Rights belongs only to the author. You got to get the permission. If it is uh, using this open license, it means uh, that whatever material that is under CC, 
you call it CCBY, also the, you just show you. You use it, the approval is already given to you. So you don't have to write in. Just use it accordingly and put the citation. Okay. So again, uh, this repository uh, is here for all of us uh, with the clear objective uh, that it will improve our academic performance and our academic productivity. Okay, move on please. So over here, oh, so that is uh, OER. Huh? <coughs> we expect uh, the number of OER from FPP to double this year. The simple reason is because uh, you know that it is gazetted okay, by UMS and whatever they put there, you are rewarded. So, you know, 0.25, if you multiply by 10, you know, it's more than an uh, academic textbook that you produce. And all these marks are gazetted, this is harkan by UMS. So, it will affect, of course, our academic promotion and so on. It can help you. Huh? So, Eugenia will show you the way to get more marks in ELMPT. It's very important. Huh? Good. Yeah, we must get use of it. All right. Get use of it. Okay. Another one is a uh, MOOC. And in uh, FPP, uh, how many MOOC is being produced? At the moment, we expect uh, those to be, whoever that's interested, there is a step-by-step -step, uh, procedure laid out. So in PEP, uh, all these things are laid out for us. Go on. Yeah. So Eugenia will show us actually how to apply for MOOC. Okay, please move on. Okay, step by step, she will mention to us afterwards. Go on. And to the time, this is the studio that is already been. Uh, last time it was in FPP. We have one, you have one here. Okay, so now we have one over there. And it is to support the production of MOOC. So whoever that come on board, nah, you just, after uh, we will show you a place to click, you register, and then we will call you, and we will show you step by step on how to build your MOOC. Okay? within half a year or shorter if you can okay so it's ready move on please so again uh, MOOC you report in the SMPPI and then it is under uh, again publication go for MOOC down there MOOC and you get 1.1 1 .1. Okay. okay yeah so uh, this is available Afterwards, uh, when Sami, Eugenia, I mean, will show you. Okay, go on. Of course, we have a lot of challenges when we go online. Okay, uh, one of them, of course, is how to make sure that all our lesson plan, our activities, are all at the higher order thinking level. Okay, move on. So these are challenges. Uh, our smart uh, V three, and now we are moving into something called ITEL, and uh, that particular platform is actually built but that's the kind the social constructivist paradigm where we believe that knowledge is constructed through peer group activities online or even face to face okay so for example uh, in the triangle there okay the subject are the students the outcome the course learning outcome and if you can uh, set up certain atoran, uh, you can set up certain agihan tugas among the community of students online, then we'll be with the appropriate tools, you might be able to bring out the learning outcome. Uh, many have practiced in uh, many different ways, and you can actually share your innovative ways uh, in certain platform in PEP. Move on, please. Another Complaint is, you know, concerning engagement online. And we have many challenges. Uh, in the Amin will show you uh, how using our ITEL as well as different uh, apps, different features that are available, able to increase engagement online. Okay. Okay. Move on, please. The TPEC model, we are all the content experts. Okay. And we have our different pedagogical approaches and we bring in the different technology to enhance and to support the realization of our course learning outcome. Okay, move on please. Uh, this is a view 
uh, where the center is actually Bloom's taxonomy, cognitive domain, and if we look at the higher order thinking, create, five is move. Yeah. So, for example, over here, create the action verb, the activities, that means uh, the course learning outcome, uh, the learning design that you have, then you bring in technology. Okay, so move on. If you come to visit a PEP, there's a big slogan up, up there, learning design first, technology second. So most important is, you know, we, in our own different uh, discipline, we have our different uh, pentecatan, we have our different uh, approaches that we feel is more appropriate to our cohort of students. Yes, so learning design first. Then we think about, you know, what technology comes in to support it. telcorp.ums.edu.my please uh, visit this place it's prepared for all of us again there is a link over there in the first paragraph click it and you share your one minute or two minutes uh, of practices uh, over here and during the time uh, our TNCA Prof Rasid Mayer whoever that submit there receive a personally signed certificate of appreciation from him okay and again, whatever the work that you do here, you can uh, put it in the OER and link it over here, and you are rewarded accordingly. Okay, you can see uh, in all the faculties are listed there. Okay, uh, just go to this place, huh? then you can see actually the different sharing, also from FVP Ada. Okay, move on. Uh, Learning with technology, a student guide is already the fourth edition. And please inform our students, go to PEP website, a lot of publication over there, and it will support actually the, uh, to optimize the use of technology in teaching and learning. Move on. This is a publication that we work together with Kementerian and also with UNESCO. And those of us who are into OER, open licensing, and you have a passion uh, to build your resources, reaching out also to the disabled, to the OKU, then we have a policy actually that is also prepared. And UMS actually took the lead in preparing this among all the University of Awang. It is available and published by our Jabatan Pendidikan Tinggi. Move on. So a list of some of those that we have uh, published is all available. Go to PEP website, under publication, they are all there. Okay, so our help desk, the slogan is ever ready. <laughs> so this is uh, Zhu Fatli, Faiz, they are available to answer to any query. Okay, move on please. I'm going to, we are going to show you uh, two video clips. Uh, one is concerning our studio and you find that it is helpful. Please, by all means, contact us. It's available for every one of us. And also the ITEL launching. Okay. Can we play a two short video clip?
management system. I'm Tyler, version 4.0, University Malaysia software. <coughs> I thought I'd learn us interactive, innovative, technology-enabled learning. The new OMS Learning Management System was part of the Digital Learning and Teaching Space Initiative until that new OMS was developed with the joint efforts of the Department of Information Technology and Communication, JTMK, and the Center for E-Learning, EP. Introducing you to our new world. Experience new heights of education. Reach out to the most competent and passionate mentors. activities or resources, make it easy for users to add particular supporting to learning objectives. <coughs> Starting from next semester, we are all going into ITEL. These are all available for every one of us to use. Okay, thank you so much, everybody. Yeah. Okay. We we'll call upon Eugenia. So I'm Eugenia. I'm actually from PPIB, um, and I am the um, Penyelaras MOOC and OER in uh, PP. Okay, so um, before we start, um, I just want to go through how do you need to apply MOOC? Okay, this is, I think, very easy because we have changed the previous template because before this we have a um, template where you need to fill in week by week, but now, we want you to um, develop your MOOC on the dot and at the same time go through it with your reviewer. Okay, so um, the first step, you will need to fill in the Google form to apply for MOOC so that we can prepare the platform for you to develop your MOOC. Okay, so and then you will receive a letter together with the template on the checklist of what you should have in your MOOC course okay so that is the first step and you can see there six months of development okay so some lecturers they prefer to go through those six months together with their reviewers it's okay can but do let us know if you want your reviewers to have their surat uh, nantikan earlier then you let us know we will prepare it for you guys 
Okay, so um, some prefer to have their reviewers to do uh, the review after they have developed the mock. Okay, so that is one month for the reviewers to actually go through your course. Okay, in the platform provided. Okay, so one month for that one. Okay, and then in the checklist, the reviewers uh, checklist also in there. Okay, we prepared some sort of like table four template for you guys. Okay, so that they have their own calculation for the reviewers one and reviewers two. So you will need to select your own reviewers. Okay, these reviewers can be among your colleagues. Okay, so as long as they know uh, the field that you are teaching, the course that you are teaching. Okay, yeah. Yes, yes, correct. Yes, two reviewers. Yeah. Because in the um, Google link, um, we will ask who are your selected reviewers. Mm. Okay, so that is the second step. Okay, the third step. Uh, in the third step, okay, if your reviewers have any suggestions or recommendations for you to actually to update uh, your course okay you can go through it okay and then let us know if you have any changes um, not letting us PP knows uh, but your penyelaras okay your penyelaras will actually confirm everything is done 100% on this part okay this faculty then only she will go through with us okay then the last part okay uh, step four so you will once everything is done okay by penyelaras Okay, and then only Pinaras will let us know, okay, I think this course is ready to go. Then only we will issue a letter for you to proceed with your MOOC. Okay, we will publish your MOOC in ITEL. Okay, so for now, um, I just, I think I need to let everyone know that um, ITEL is currently in our internal server, so it's not released to the public. Okay, so bear in mind, that our current MOOC is still internal for our internal students, okay? So JTMK is uh, trying their best to, uh, how do you say, to still, um, they are still coming up with the server for the public, okay? So it will be ready in three to four months time. So yeah, that needs time. So I have seen the, um, the, um, display of the MOOC uh, for the public it's a similar like I tell so don't worry about that okay so your MOOC is available to share for UMS students only that's why it's stated there for now okay um, we will tell all the penyelaras in uh, UMS um, to release the information once uh, your MOOC is published for the public okay all right so that is all for the um, application for MOOC Okay, so now let's go to my slides. Okay, so to, oh no no uh, okay oh yeah okay next second slide. Okay, all right. So presentation outline. So today I have just uh, brief you guys on the application. So I will only touch on how do you need to create MOOC and what are the license that you need to use for the uh, when you want to park your resources, your materials inside OER, inside ITEL, and inside your MOOC courses. Okay, there's license that you need to have to pack your materials. Okay, if not, uh, we will have legal issue later. Okay, all right, so next. So this is some sort of a step-by-step -step guide on what do you need to fill in your course, uh, your MOOC course, okay? So minimum requirements, uh, Minimum requirements is needed because we have rubrics, okay, to uh, confirm that your MOOC is ready to be published, okay. So landing page, okay. So landing page is some sort of a laman promosi, okay, for you to promote your MOOC, okay. So what do you need to have in this landing page, okay? So that is before a student enrolled, before they want to go and take up your course, they will see this. 
So if they feel like, oh, okay, I'm interested, then only they click and then they go to main page. But for now, uh, what you need to prepare for this landing page is course synopsis, only a short course synopsis, okay, one paragraph maybe. And then tell us your learning outcome for the course and duration, how long is it? Four weeks, five weeks, six or seven, you can go up to 14, okay? So the level, you need to indicate which levels of learners that you are targeting. If you want to have beginner, then you write down beginner. Intermediate, then intermediate, okay? So that is the level. And the fee, of course, for our students, internal still free. Okay, it's still free for our students because we are parking our MOOC in ITEL, internal students. Okay, um, image of the course, you can get a lot of images outside. You can go to Canva. You can just, I don't know, there's this magic, uh, there's new features in Canva where, they, where you type in your keyword and then they will create an image for you. That's free, okay? Free to use, you can use it, no copyright issue. Okay, next. So what did I base that on? Okay, so when I go through the whole Malaysia MOOC, okay, in other universities MOOC, I came across uh, Putra MOOC. They did not park in their own server, okay? They did not park in their own server, but they park their MOOC outside, which is under open learning. Okay, so um, if you were to see, if you were good to go through uh, their MOOC, Putra MOOC, um, they put there the length of the course, which is empat minggu, okay, four weeks. And then duration, how long does it take for the person to complete the course? It's eight hours. So eight hours here means lapan jam, empat minggu. So in total, uh, the student can only use two hours of their time in a week to actually finish up the course. Okay, so that is what we want. Probably our students are working adults. They don't have that much time. Okay, all right. So we want that. We want that kind of course where everybody can have access and can study. Okay, all right. So um, after that, they have certificate. Tiada. You want to take this TITAS cursus, cursus TITAS? There's no certificate for this, but you can just learn something from it. Okay? Did not pre uh, provide any certificate. So after that, they have um, level. Ini pemulaan, beginner. Okay? So language, Bahasa Melayu, and then, uh, yeah, tahap pembelajaran. Okay, so all these um, we don't need, some of it we don't need, we just follow the one that I put in the landing page, the course in, uh, synopsis, level fee, only those, we, we only want those, okay, alright, so next, okay, so the main page, so what is the main page, so when we go to Smart V3, or some of you might have used uh, ITEL, the top block, okay, the first one where we have the announcement forum, that is the main page, okay. When the students have already go into our Laman Promosi and then they decided to enroll, then they will go to main page. So what do you need to have in your main page? Greetings, okay. So it can be like Dr. Oscar, uh, Salamadan, okay, Selamat Datang or welcome to my course, okay? It can be in a form of video, it can be in a form of PPT, it's up to you, okay? All right, so uh, lecturer's information. Okay, lecturer's information. Some prefer to develop their MOOC together with the team, okay? That team, probably lecturers, okay? Two, three lecturers working on one MOOC can no problem put their name in it okay list the name in main page okay if you are the only one who's working on that then put in your name how do you need how how does the student need to contact you email okay or whatsapp okay so put in your information there okay 
All right, so teaching schedule. If you have any schedule that requires you to meet your students face to face, put up the schedule so that they can look for you. Okay, this is not face to face in your office, but it can be via uh, Google Meet, Zoom meeting. Okay, all right, so introduction video. If you were to see in Laman Promosi just now in Putra Mok, they have this short video in 30 seconds to one minute video introducing their courses. Okay, the course that uh, they are opening up for MOOC. Okay, in that video, it puts in the um, course synopsis, learning outcome, what can they learn. Okay, so a hint of what they're going to expect in that course. Okay, so that can be in a 30 to 1 minute uh, video. Okay, so that is introduction video. So ice breaking up to the lecturers. Okay, you want to do ice breaking face to face up to you. Or you want them to uh, create a video. Okay, to tell them, uh, tell you about themselves. Okay, so up to you again. It can be in the form of Flipgrid. It can be in the form of Padlet. Okay. So that one, okay, so that is only about main page. So these are required when you want to open a MOOC course. Okay, next. So what's the minimum week or minimum topic to open up MOOC courses? So um, I have taken a look at different, different platforms. Minimum will be four weeks. Okay, you can go up to maximum 14 weeks. Okay, but then again, um, some lecturers uh, prefer to call their courses by the topic's name. Some prefer to call their courses by week, week one, week two. Okay, so uh, we want you to actually open up four topics or four weeks. Okay, untuk satu kursus mok. Okay, so that's the minimum. Okay, you can go for minimum. All right. So learning outcome, you need to state your learning outcomes for every week or every topic of your courses. Okay, so that is very easy. I think that is what we have practiced in our Smart V3 and also ITEL. Okay, next. Okay, course content. So course content, you need to have original video. Where can you get that original video from you? Create a video, three to four minutes time. Three to four minutes, yeah? Not half an hour, not one hour. Okay, video of you teaching that particular week. Okay, bear in mind, one video minimum. Okay, I, I don't say only one video can be put. <laughs> okay. It can have you can have two videos okay two videos in that particular week or that particular topic okay in one week two videos two videos up to you but don't make a video that is more than 10 minutes okay you will lose your students towards uh, halfway okay so um, that one is for one minimum uh, video for each week yeah so if you have four weeks minimum four weeks you need to have at least four videos so where can you get that video come by to pp and we will have that uh, services for you the u studio is for you to create more and have you seen the video the previous two videos that um, profong uh, shared those are done by faiz Faiz, yeah. <laughs> so Faiz can make uh, videos like that for you. Okay, he can edit for you. So you want to take how many take? Okay, can as long as nobody is scheduled on that particular day. <laughs> okay, all right. So at the end of the video, once you've done, okay, you can liaise with PEP on how you need to uh, provide the information of the presenter and developer. Okay, maybe that developer is you but the presenter is your friend can just provide the information towards the end of the video okay all right so make sure there's no sensitive issues on politics religions and racist remarks so you will need to have at least one disclaimer alert 
towards the end of the course or at the beginning of the course in the main page. Okay, so say that disclaimer alert, uh, put in. So all works featured in MOOC should use Creative Commons license. So no copyright things inside a MOOC. Okay, you will need to do uh, things uh, in this license, Creative Commons license. Okay, later I will show you how. Next. Okay, activity and assignment, they go uh, together. Uh, but it's the uh, different thing, yeah? So activity, you need to have at least one. Assignment, you need to have at least one in one week. So if you have four weeks, four minimum um, activities and assignment. So tiap tiap minggu kena ada assignment, tiap tiap minggu kena ada activity, yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, uh, but, but again, if you want your assignment to have only four, because we put in minimum four, yeah? But you want to know, in that week, did your students manage to, you know, um, get the lesson, okay? So, put a quiz there. Maybe, okay, some people might not uh, understand, what is this assignment, okay? So, people think, oh, assignment must be hard, it must be 50% and above, no, okay? MOOC is something you want to make people to learn, okay? So, we want to encourage them by having, giving them MCQ. Five items of MCQ is okay for quiz, okay? Yeah. Huh? Formal assessment. Not really formal. Not formal. Ah. In terms of, because we have uh, this uh, formative and systematic mm -hmm. so you said it's every week. So it's yeah. more to formative assessment. Yes, correct. Yeah. We don't need to have, um, we don't want to go back and forth in our MOOC courses, yeah? So, preferably, when you do these quizzes, it must be auto-graded. You know auto-graded? Short uh, answer, okay? It can be graded automatically. Students will know what marks do they get. Yes, okay? So, don't give them uh, one paragraph of essay for you to, you know, to go in. Keep on going in to mark students' essay. For example, if it's open to public, if it's released to public, 200,000 students. Will you be able to manage that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So do auto graded quiz. Okay. So um, activity here, you can get the activity from different website. Okay. All right. How do you need to do this? How do you need to do this? Just cite them. Okay. I got this from where and here and there. This is the link. Okay. But you just put in, click here, and then hyperlink the here. So they can go and do the activities outside, not inside your MOOC. Okay? Alright? Not inside your MOOC platform. Okay? So that is the activities. You don't need to create your own activity, but the quiz, you have to do it on your own because it's parked inside. Okay? That's why I say assignment, you should do uh, MCQ, maybe five items only to assess whatever they have learned that particular week. Okay? All right, so that is um, minimum for activities and minimum for assignment. So it's up to you how you need to do. If you want to do 10 assignments for 10 weeks, also can. If you want to do only four, you only assess every three uh, weeks or three topics, up to you. Because what we put up here is four minimum for the whole course, for the whole course. Okay, all right, next. Okay, extra reading and also reference and acknowledgement, okay? This one also should be included, okay? Because in the rubrics, this is a must, okay? So when we use that activities in different websites, so we need to cite them, okay? We need to actually acknowledge their website. And then extra reading, it can be in the form of YouTube. I know some of you definitely like to go to YouTube and find your resources there. Yes, can, but make sure to look out for Creative Commons license. Okay, all right. And then do not embed YouTube 
too much in our MOOC platform. Okay, you can hyperlink. Hyperlink. So click here to know more about this topic. They click and they go to YouTube. Hyperlink. Okay, it's there in Idel. All right. So that one. Okay. So I think everybody is looking forward for this one. Um, me and Dr. Kenneth, we've gone through a lot of roadshow road about this, and Dr. Kenneth um, has brief everybody a lot on creative commons but i'm just going to shorten it okay so creative commons um these are the icons that usually uh people see but they don't know what does it mean okay so i'm here to let you know that the first icon a man standing you need to acknowledge me you need to attribute me so that is what we call CCBY. You need to attribute me. Must. Okay, my name should be on everything. Okay, if you take my material, make sure my name is there too. Okay, attribute. So the second icon, the money icon, non-commercial. So that one, if you take my material and then you decided to sell it, then I will sue you. Okay, because I don't want my materials to be sold off. Okay, I use, my, I use your material and I open a course and I charge students to come into that course. Okay or not? Still no. No, cannot. Okay, because it's non-commercial. Alright, so you see the equal sign, the equal symbol? okay that you can copy my material 100 percent but if you change it then we will have a problem so you need to copy my work as it is do not change my work so that's the symbol for that and then next to it you can see a roundabout there <laughs> okay that one, my materials, you can copy 100%, you can even change. You can paraphrase my work. But my license stay the same. Don't change my license. For example, I put my license as CCBY share alike. And then suddenly you said, okay, I've done some changes. And then I decided to put CCBY non-derivative wrong cannot okay because the license should stay as it is ccby share alike okay all right so i'm going to tell you which one which one of the combination that you can put in our mock i tell and also oer next the top three those are the most accommodating license that we can park in Artel, MOOC and OER. So whatever posters that we have, take either this tree. Okay? CC and then you can see the zero and then slash. That is for public domain. Free. Use it. Share it. Sell it. Public domain. Free. You can use it. And then second one, CCBY, just like what I told you, you need to attribute the author. CCBY share alike, license should be similar. Okay, so down there, the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh, okay, all these, they are not a free culture license. We recommend for you not to put in OER, MOOC, and also your ITEL. I tell or Smart V3, if you were to see right down there, it's CCBY. Okay, Creative Commons CCBY. Okay, so you can have all those three top three uh, license. If you were to see on the left part, you see the two papers, they are duplicate. That is 100% copy. You can copy. You can even change. Okay, you can change the materials, the content, and you can even sell it. Okay, so those are the top three items that is the most accommodating. So right down below, you can see the bullet and then C, 
Nah, itu adalah copyright. No, no, no. Cannot. Don't put any uh, materials that has already been published outside inside your ITEL. Even MOOC, even OER. Okay, cannot. Don't put it there. Okay, because later on you'll be in trouble, not us. <laughs> okay, all right. So um, that is from my PPT. So I'm going to share how do you get this license? How do you know this is the correct license for me? Okay, so let's go to creativecommons.org. You can get this free on the website. Okay, so once you go here, creativecommons.org, you click on share your work. Okay, once you click on that, you will be directed to here. And then you can see the blue box, it has choose your license, choose a license. So get started. Okay, so when you click on yes, no, yes, as long as other share like, the license down there, it will change. So for now, it's CCBY because you allow adaptations, yes, and you allow commercial users of your work. But what if we don't allow the work to be shared? We click on no. It says CCBY non-derivative. Okay, so you cannot, you ask the person to only copy your work 100%. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so, but you still allow them to sell. Okay, so that one, but what if you say yes as long as others share alike? Click that one. That happened. So you can see that this is a free culture license. Okay, you can see that this is a free culture license. But what if we say we don't want, we don't allow commercial users of your work? It says that this is not a free culture license. Okay, so it automatically tells you which one is free, which is not free. Okay, so okay, so the author wants you to attribute him or her, right? So go help others attribute you. Click. Once you click, type in the work of the person that you, um, the title of the work that you take. So what's the title? Document, for example document and then you attribute the author Faiz okay and then if you put or park your work in OER you can put the link there yeah so when people take your materials you can see how many people downloaded your work in OER because we have the data. So we know how many people have access to your work. Okay, so you do that. Okay, all right, so um, since uh, document by Faiz is licensed under Creative Commons, okay, there you go. All right, it automatically helps you to create your own license. So what you need to do is just to copy uh, and paste it on your document. Very easy, okay? There's no standard size on how you need to make it in your document, okay? No standard size, up to you. Just make sure it's available for everybody to view. Okay? All right. So that is one. Um, before this, in the previous roadshow, Prof Fong has also showed everybody how to go through uh, and look for Creative Commons uh, images. Okay? Can we go to google.com? Okay, so, um, okay, all right, so we want to look for what image by is? Okay. Okay, nice. all right. So, how do you need to know which one is CC? So we go to tools, images, images, and then go to tools. Okay, usage rights. Creative Commons licenses. Okay. 
All right. So once we have this, so all these features they have Creative Commons license. Tapi kita tidak tahu mana satu free. Jadi kita klik. We click on the butterfly, and then you see the license details. Okay, click on it. Okay, so this is public domain dedication. So this is free. We can use it. Put it in our PPT. Okay, you can share. Mook, ITEL, OER. Begitu. Jadi, okay, I think that's about it for my sharing. Do you have any questions? <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So if there's no question, if you have any questions, you can just contact me via uh, penyelaras <laughs> or your DBA. <laughs> okay. Can. Okay. Um, if you are interested to apply for MOOC, also can contact me so that I can guide you. Yeah. All right. Um, since there are no questions, I can pass this to you. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Iya, betul. Oh, this is not for your full time courses ya? Ah, no, no. Okay, so I just give a very simple um, sample lah kan? Okay, so we have 14 weeks. So we notice that that one particular week in our 14 weeks sangat panjang mau explain sama student. Sangat panjang. And you feel that it takes a lot of time for you to explain that particular week. Make it as MOOC. Subtopic, subtopic, subtopic for four weeks. Ask them to go on their own. You can do that. Okay? Yeah. Boleh juga. Yang ada satu kursus yang dalam 14 weeks. In that 14 weeks. And you have one week that your students need a lot of time to understand. Or maybe they need a lot of visual images to actually understand that one particular topic break it break it to four weeks and that is their own self-learning you can do that okay yeah ongoing courses full time i think you can you can talk to ppk maybe mc <laughs> Homework? Yeah. 14 weeks for the full time course. Homework. Some of the courses will be in previous semester. Uh huh. Uh, so some of the courses uh, I mean, some of the courses will be in previous semester. Uh -huh. Some of the homework is it a must for this coming semester or the previous oh, no. courses? Oh no. MOOC KPI is throughout the whole year. Okay. okay. So it doesn't affect whether your semester uh, for this semester or next semester. Okay. Yeah. Not yet. Yeah. We will let you know when it's open to public. Yeah. For our students, yes. It's open. Because it's internal server. The public server not ready yet. Yeah. Okay, the KPI yeah, for one faculty it depends on your TDA. If your TDA say uh mesti mau ada kursus tiga MOOC ya dari FPP then jadi begitulah. So if your TDA say okay, I think my my faculty uh, can only get one MOOC for one year, one so MOOC then one year. <laughs> then your TDA probably opens it up herself. <laughs> okay. Yeah, All right. So yeah. Yeah. MOOC. Yeah. LMPT, okay, it will be under non-index, but the criteria, it will say kursus MOOC. Ada tuh pilihan kursus MOOC. Ya. Ya, SMPPI, general publication. Ya, and then under non-index. When the drop-down, it will be right down below, kursus MOOC. Ada tuh. Ya. Ya, betul. Dia paling bawah lagi. Ya. Oh, oh, yeah. Profong said it's MOOC on its own. It's not non-index, ya. Wow, tinggi. Okay. So, kalau tiada soalan, ah, one, 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 one
1.1, yeah. That's the mark. Yeah. The good thing about MOOC is that you can, I think you can apply it if your MOOC is active throughout the year. You can apply for that SMPPI. Even you uh, do it this year, next year also can if it's still active. Kalau tiada suram, tiada orang masuk, itu kita tahu lah. Okay, alright. So, yeah, are you ready? Okay. Mesti amin ya. Tiada satu lagi. Okay. Siapa? Di sini aja. Okay, thank you, Eugenia. So just now tentang tentang MOOC ya, don't get complicated. Your mind don't complicate your mind. MOOC and MC dua benda yang berbeza. Okay, so MC orang lain, not under our department. Okay, so this is MOOC. Okay, minimum empat. Apa apa tanya dia. Right. So, um, sebelum kita mula with my uh, part uh, in ITEL and its implementation, so thank you very much for having us uh, PEP dekat sini this morning. Uh, hari ni actually our last our last uh, road show. Uh, but somehow uh, artist kan? Uh, yeah. Uh, sepatutnya petang ini. Tetapi petang ni kita ada program yang lain pula. So, kita have to postpone another day so uh, actually kita semua sudah happy ni this is the last day tetapi suddenly besok satu lagi kan after one whole month ya yeah, almost one whole month daripada Februari okay anyway um, before before this um, what saya hendak uh, explain is smart UMS and ITEL smart UMS and ITEL these are two different platform Okay, so get that correct. So starting next semester, semester 2, 2023, 2022, 2023, no more smart UMS. Don't dream of smart UMS. Forget smart UMS. Okay, smart UMS is not applicable anymore. Full stop. Yes, we can let it go one day. Yes, it's good that it takes time to forget it because somehow we still need those things dalam smart UMS tu to be transferred into our ITEL. So you can do that. Okay, you can back up all your data, all your things dalam smart UMS 3 itu and transfer those into your ITEL. All right. There are seven easy steps that we have prepared for you and we will launch that soon. Okay. Easy steps saja, seven easy step. All right. So you have to understand. Smart UMS was developed on platform a Moodle platform 3.2. All right. And uh, our ITEL is developed on different platform, which is much robust. Moodle 4.0. Okay. So the same platform that KPT is using. All right. So, we have developed ITEL on that platform so that it can accommodate semua all the needs. No more Smart UMS sebab there will be no maintenance, no whatever on Smart UMS. But your barang-barang semua masih ada di sana. Okay. Yes, you still uh, boleh log in into Smart UMS. It's still there, cuma you cannot use that one. No more of that. Okay, no more of that uh, in the Smart UMS. Even the student is also not using that one. No more. Okay, so your student will go. We, we are migrating to ITEL. 100%. Forget, that's why tadi saya cakap, forget about Smart UMS. No more Smart UMS. Right, I believe that most of us here sudah daftar your courses. That is very very good, so that you know what how it look like. But um, the implementation of that, the more detail of that will be conducted during our talk. Nanti ada lima, I think six ya, yeah? tiga from here and tiga from there. Uh, untuk attend the uh, bengkel, uh, TOT, talk bengkel on the twenty first, you know? on the twenty first. 
Okay, so when these people tiga dia pasal ini and tiga dia pasal ini come back to the faculty, they will form groups of mentees. So we are going to establish this mentee mentor uh, punya system. All right. So you have your mentor. Your mentor will tell you will help you to will help you to uh, get over whatever problem that you have in your ITEL. All right. So we will train these mentors during the talk on the 21st bulan ini. Okay. So kita activate that system. Mentor mentee all the faculties. All the institute in GMS are going for mentor mentee system. All right. Okay. So uh, let's go through those. Right. So this is what is going on. From the atas itu, smart that we are using all this one, and then we move on to migrating to ITEL yang di bawah to experience new heights of education. Right. So other number one seven three two, we are so familiar with one seven three two. So mengigau with one seven three two. So your next iga one is forty forty twenty. Okay, <laughs> right. So what does it mean one seven three two? One seven three two refers to what you know what it means. Okay, that is pembelajaran teradun sokongan. This is what we've been doing all this while. It's just sokongan. That is the concept. There are two concepts here that we have to grasp betul. -betul. The second one is 40, 40, 20 is pembelajaran teradun gantian. So there are two words there. Satu adalah sokongan and another one is gantian. What is sokongan? It's just to sokong our pembelajaran in our lecture throughout that 14 weeks. And gantian is to ganti us. Alright? So what we've been doing all this while, I am sorry to say, I, we, EPEP, have to apologize for that one because we never knew about that. We just knew about it. Who found that? Puan Samni found that. What we've been doing all this one were wrong. Kita ganti dah. Sedangkan there is no guideline in UMS saying that we can ganti online our class. Okay? So we're not going to do that anymore. We cannot do that anymore. Okay? All this while kita practice something is wrong. Okay, and no one ever realized that until we start to search. Is there any guideline? Is there any sah guideline mengatakan bahawa kita can ganti while we are away? Put everything dalam our smart UMS. Actually, we cannot do that. Okay, so now we can do that once the PTG is implemented. Next session, not next semester. Okay, so we are here, PEP is here today, this morning in FPP, to give some awareness, memberitahu bahawa PTG is not implemented next semester, but next sesi. So meaning to say, next semester, we are still, you still have 1732 for the very, very last time. Okay? Except courses like Doctor Pet, uh, lab, individu, counselling, uh, Doctor Zihan, Doctor Pet. So those courses require labs. So they are the only courses yang remain with one seven three two. Setelah PTG diimplementkan. While the others courses, we have to migrate to forty forty twenty. What is forty forty twenty? 40%, 40% and 20%. Okay? This actually appeared dalam our table 4 now. If you notice that. Dekat summary tu. 40, 40, 20. We have to come up to 40, 40, 20. Alright? So that part will be explained by one Sarmi later on. Right, we move on. Thank you, Don. Right, I'm going to talk a little bit about the ITEL. What we've been practicing in Smart UMS all this while is we have abused our Smart UMS. <laughs> abused in such a way that we turn that into dumping ground somehow. Okay, we dump most of our things there. Most of our notes 
300 over, 200 over, 100 over. When we check that, my God, 300 over input, 200 over input. When we go to what are those? Notes, assessment, note assessment. When we check again, oops, it's just assessment, but there is no monitoring. Okay? So, that is the reason why kita punya, uh, what's that, data, ya? Yeah? Uh, yang menunjukkan how many our student log in online untuk pembelajaran is only 1%. 1%, the whole UMS. The data shows that our student log in for educational purposes, including smart UMS, is only 1%. 99% untuk something else. Okay, why? When I, most of us went through uh, survey uh, some of the reason is not interesting kenapa tak masuk dalam kenapa tak log in smart yam it's not interesting it's boring there are too many things we do not know what to read we don't know what to do so we forget it so what do you do with the notes so we ask our friend have you downloaded that note yes we have can you pass it to me okay so that one did that guy tak masuk tak log in we don't want that that also shows that our student in UMS has very low engagement in online learning and teaching and learning. Teaching from us, learning from them. Very low of that. So, we are increasing that one. The topmost thing here is engagement, student engagement. How to engage the student. So, we at PEP have came out with these three domains. Digital content. TNL activities and e assessment. Question is, do I care? Yes, you have to. Otherwise, why we are here? None. Right. So, what are these things? These are the things that we must have in our LMS. In this case, I tell. Kita bahagikan dia mengikut digital content, e assessment, then TNL activity, and these needed to be interactive. Okay, interactive, innovative, technology, embedded learning. I tell. Okay, so that the word I came from, interactive and innovative. Right, so all these things needed to be interactive. How to interactive this content? So, um, Prof. Tana ada dekat sini, knows very well about this thing. And uh, the other six people yang akan attending itu, thought nanti kita akan tell them how to help your mentee to come up with interactive uh, element in your content nanti. Right. Can we move on? Okay. So, I have to touch a little bit on PTG here because I tell refers to PTG juga. You need to uh, um, apply PTG di dalam I tell. So, since kita punya I tell is third, I mean sorry, PTG kita, PTG pembelajaran teradun gantian, substitutions, 30 until 79 percent. You can have that, but we have decided hari tu, the faculty have decided to go until 30 saja for everyone. While the 40 and 52, boleh mohon kepada dekan secara bertulis, if you have jawatan, lantikan. Dr. Dayang, right. So, uh, Dr. Dayang, Nanti akan keluarkan memo tentang tu ya. When the time comes, next sesi. Right, so we are talking about 30 lah dekat sana. So what is 30? 40, 40, 20 itu ya. 30% of PTG bermaksud, this is based on 3 credit hours ya. Bermaksud 14 jam learning material. Remember just now, learning material. Digital learning material. 14 hours of learning activities and 8 hours of e-assessment. And this, 14, 14, 18 is equal to 4 weeks. That is 36 hours taken from your SLT. 120, not your, your student SLT. Our student SLT, 120 hours. What does that mean? We can be away from FPP for 4 weeks without having face-to-face -face class with our student. Okay, you can do that. And those with jawatan pentadbiran lantikan, you can go until 50% dengan surat kepada dekan. Okay, 
tak boleh sampai 79 lah sampai 50 saja dah decide sampai 70 saja eh? 50 is equal to 7 weeks away 7 weeks away from your student face to face question is if i am having my class with my student online i'm over there in london zooming with my student here in ums fpp can it be done that way no because that is not ptg that is considered as physical because you are online synchronously these are this thing as synchronized yeah? four weeks all right clear that one other beza yeah? ptg means you will be away from your student ambil lah cuti ke while you are going for conference one week Cuti sebelum raya, cuti selepas raya. So, there three weeks tak boleh jumpa student. And then one more week away with your kids holiday. So, empat kali dalam satu semester. We have 14 weeks. Okay. So, UMS say, yes, you can go away for four weeks without having face-to-face -face with your student. Face-to-face, -face, like now, we are face-to-face. -face. And another method of face-to-face -face is you are over there in your office. Zooming with your student in the class or wherever they are. That is face to face juga, physical. Convention, that is not conventional, tapi itu adalah online. Online ataupun conventional. Dalam kita punya table 4 tu ada kan, the first column tu, uh, conventional ataupun online kan. So, this is considered as, kita on the other side lah. Non face to face, untuk PTG. So, you can check that one lah, two hours, two hours, two hours, two hours. Four times, okay? Any question? Okay. Good. Right. So back to 30% PTG, 30% time 120 hours equal to 36 hours SLT. That formula comes from 40, 40, 20. 40% digital content, 40% teaching and learning uh, activities, and 20% e-assessment. I'll start from e-assessment first. So, what is e-assessment? E-assessment refers to any type of assessment, be it summative or formative. Okay? If your assessment, let's say you, I have topical quiz. So, I have like four, 10 topics to 14 topics. So, I choose to have formative untuk PTG 4 minggu. You can do that. Okay? Um, nak buat midterm one of the PTG you can do that um, nak buat forum sajalah you can do that ataupun uh, I will on week 2 I will advise nanti bila kita sudah mula PTG jangan do that in the first week it's so rugi ok sebab first week we have to be with our student and explain everything ok so you have to plan very well lah where to put your PTG Sebab PTG ni has to be in your table 4. Our table 4 need to be endorsed much earlier sebelum kita bermulanya kuliah. Okay? Right, so you have to plan that. Dekat mana nak buat PTG tu. So anyway, so you can have the assignment. Second week, let's say you decided to have assignment, so you park that assignment in the PTG that particular week. It's all considered as your e-assessment regardless bila lah the submission itu ok the folder is there already alright ok any question e-assessment Dr. Chris ok e-assessment uh, e-assessment must be in our table 4 right? yeah, included in our table 4 that is for summative for uh, formative and it's not included it's to increase the awareness to increase understanding That can be included. Sebab e-assessment ini can be summative ataupun formative. Okay. Yeah, any, anyone. Or both. Right. Okay, so let's say we have uh, contoh eh, for PTG, 
uh, PTG1 kita gunakan quiz uh, uh, summative lah sebab kita tak ada midterm so kita nak nak that mark be accumulated nanti kan so buatlah dekat sana and then mungkin second week nak buat sekali lagi buat so kita ada empat empat kata lagi like five question five question 20 and then 20 percent tak payah pening kepala dah you got that ok ataupun uh, nak tambah lagi tak maulah buat sebab you don't have that so just just give three questions pun ok yes no correct false true it's fine it's up to you because you know your course very well we none of us can say that what you are doing is wrong as long as you follow the format whatever content that you do that is your you are the master of your course Okay, right. Thank you, Dr. Chris. Okay, so we move to TN, uh, TNL activity. That is 40% equal to 14 hours of SLT. Okay? We are here referring to SLT. Alright, so dalam 40 ini, you can do anything. Any learning activities, teaching and learning activities be it, let's say for example kumo space ke, forum ke, chat ke uh, flip grip ke gamification ke go ahead gamification is very interesting sebab one of the highest percentage of our students in UMS download adalah untuk game so we can turn that into something yang more useful Untuk pembelajaran hanya 1% saja. Untuk game akan remember That is one of the highest lah Berapa persen ya I cannot remember Okay So uh, digital content Your digital content can be video Maximum video is 10 minutes Please Don't give more than 10 minutes Okay We have watched the first and second video just now It's quite interesting I would say quite interesting The first video on the launching of ITEL itu it's 3 minutes and 6 seconds. It's very fast. Very fast? Yes. Okay. It's 3 minutes and three minutes and 6 seconds. The second video on the U Studio, the Green Studio, Green Screen Studio, is 1 minute 28 seconds. That is the amount of video yang just nice. So what is meant by 10 minutes dekat sana? Let's say the... Can I upload three video, uh, satu video, three minutes, satu video, two minutes, satu video, lagi satu minute? Yes, you can do that. Okay, you can do that. But there is a better way. You can use H5P. Dalam H5P, you can only use one video. Play the video, pause the video, ask question, answer question, continue the video, so that it's not get boring. That can be done under TNL activities. Not the content lah. Okay. So we will teach this master TOT lah. Right. So lecture notes. I might be wrong here but we will check it. Uh, 15 pages of lecture notes is equal to 1 hour. If 15 pages. We will check that one. Jangan, jangan, jangan caya sangat lah. Eh? <laughs> Jangan bercaya sangat because we have to check that one. I might give you a wrong uh, put information dekat sini. Right. So other than that infographic short article and journal this where the the uh, apa uh, smart UMS kita tu jadi dumping ground lah when it come to the journal article 10 journal article for that particular week 5 journal article how sure are you your student baca all those article effectiveness dekat sana so that is why in ITEL we have came up with those three domains and we don't go for quantity anymore focus on quality effectiveness apa yang kita hendak student dapat adalah that is what they supposed to get bukan we feel I think this article is very good for them to read ok so we have to change that mindset from now on ok we moving toward quality instead of quantity so don't worry if I put 500 uh, input so I will be the winner nanti masa no more of that those has passed 
Sebab so, those were the time di mana kita nak increase the awareness of using smart. So no more. Forget about that one. Okay? Go for the quality. Alright? So this is how we came up with the strategy how to implement uh, the ini. I tell 30%. Our suggestion based on 4 PTG, 4 PTG to equal to 4, four weeks away, 36 SLT, yeah? <coughs> that one, right? remember? So we have PTG 1, PTG 2, PTG 3, and PTG 4. All you need is just a minimum of one. One. Uno. Learning material. One learning activity and one e-assessment for each of the PTG. Okay? What if I want to give more than one? Sure, you can do that. But, you have to make sure that the one learning material itu, kalau more than one lah kan, learning material itu, the SLT, the student spend to learn, is not more than 3.5 hours. Okay? If you calculate by hours, one learning material for each of those four is equal to four hours. 3.5 hours. 3.5 hours times four is equal to 14 hours. The same thing goes to e-learning activities and two hours for e-assessment, each of that. That is what is meant by 40, 40, 20 itu. A little bit mathematical here, but it's very simple arithmetic sahaja dekat sana. Okay? Can you, can you repeat that one? <laughs> Right, okay, one learning material is enough to achieve comply PTG. Okay, uh, LMPT lulus if you just follow this formula. Okay, the question is can I give more than one? Yes, you can give more than one, but make sure that the input yang untuk learning material itu tidak exceeding 3.5 three and a half hours lah untuk student belajar. This one is on their own, yeah? yeah. PTG, yeah? This one under PTG, yeah? On their own, yeah? So this also answer the question berapa jamkah boleh kita conduct online? The answer is 36 SLT. 36 SLT itu equal to 30%. Berapa banyak? Lebih kurang Empat minggu sahaja. Okay. Alright. Dr. Kamila. Okay. Yeah. But the question came from Dr. Kamila last night. <laughs> okay, Dr. Kamila. So, 36 hours. SLT. Daripada 120. Yes. Okay. Question on that? Dr. Sharon. Yes. Okay. If you are going face to face online, that is not PTG, yeah. Okay. But you can do that. That falls under seventy percent itu. Seventy percent untuk. Uh, <laughs> good job. Uh, online, online. Uh, if you recorded, if you recorded, you recorded your lecture. Okay, recorded your lecture and then you upload that recording di dalam ini PTG uh, that is can be considered as one learning material. Okay, faham? Okay, if you are having live face to face that is not PTG. Okay, alright? Clear kan? Alright. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sepatutnya yang tu tak sepatutnya berlaku, kan? Hmm. Dia tak dikira dalam PTG. Dia masih dikira sebagai physical. 
Kalau kita tengok dalam kita punya table 4 pun dekat sana adalah di sebelah kanan eh sebelah kiri. Siapa yang mengawal itu? <laughs> Bukan PEP. <laughs> Boleh. Ya. Yeah. Okay. Dan itu bukannya PTG. Kan. Kalau PTG kita sudah cakap tadi kita boleh kawal tapi kita set. Kan? Hmm. Okay. So itu sudah set up. Hmm. Faculty pun sudah setuju dalam JKT. Hmm. Ajaran bahasa Arab kita dengan kita untuk 30%. Hmm. Okey, itu set up. Tetapi bila si Amin cakap tadi yang online test itu uh, online itu synchronize. Synchronize. Uh, synchronize. Ah. Ting 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 ting. Face to face physical adalah kita bersama. Hmm hmm. Physical bersama kita. Yeah. Dan bukannya online. Yeah, physical macam gini. Kalau dibenarkan yang gini gini online, itu bukan physical bagi saya. Ah, tidak. 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 Yang tu uh, di luar uh, PEP peluang untuk yes maksudnya nanti yang itu eh ini dah, dah, dah di luar perbincangan PEP sebenarnya uh, apabila table 4 to the endos KP lah menengok sana dengan arahan daripada TDAA. Uh, yes, it's not counted under PTG, correct. Tetapi, kita cannot, cannot run away from the reality. Benda itu wujud dalam kita punya table 4. And then, is it free for us untuk letak di sana, the column tu, untuk fill in how many hours di sana? So, that one is... Ah, uh, uh, okay. Uh, minta maaf, uh, TDAA, sudah rule out, kata tidak boleh. 30%, 30%. After 30% habis, habis. Tidak boleh. Maksudnya tidak boleh yang online Sebab kalau tidak kita tidak boleh kawal Ada yang sampai 100% tidak masuk kelas Yang sekarang pun kita susah mau kawal So 30% dalam table 4 itu Kita sudah nyatakan 36 jam Dia memang ada appear di sana Teaching and learning Tengok yang paling bawah ada merah-merah tu Ada sana 36 Boleh nampak sana 36 jam SLT Kita boleh nampak 40, 40, 20 Yes, dalam summary Memang nampak Jadi kalau kamu salah parking 1, 2, 3 tu Di sana tidak akan wujud pun 36 70 mungkin yes. So kena setting baliklah Dalam tab, table 4 Okey, right So uh, maksudnya tu Saya punya table 4 pun kena buang lah yang itu <laughs> Because I have, I have that dalam my table 4 Yang face to face online itu ya. So kita kena buang eh Khusus kita <laughs> Right. So no more. So SPP uh, punya rule out TDDA sudah cakap no more face to face. You cannot use Zoom as a synchronized teaching. You have to be here face to face. Okay. No. Sorry, Jose. Thirty percent is thirty percent. Saya record dia punya ayat. Okay. So uh, okay this part lah. Huh? All right. So uh, Zoom. Okay. Oh, okay. Enes. Inilah kami bergaduh itu. Sebab dia yang assessment tadi. Assessment. Yang sebelum ni. Sebab katakanlah. Okay. E-assessment. Yang ini mesti merujuk kepada table 4 CLO lagi kan. Dengan pula CLO yang bukan mengukur kognitif. Tiba-tiba dia mengukur menggunakan e-assessment ini. Yes. Contohnya katakan. Interpersonal. Leadership, personal skill, tiba-tiba pula menggunakan ukuran e-assessment. Sedangkan itu bukannya boleh diukur menggunakan e-assessment. Jadi itu kena lihat kan? Yes. Laras dengan CLO. Yes. Okay. That part, that part is actually under fakulti punya quality control and juga TDDA. PLO satu dua tujuh lah. Okay. 
Yes. Of course lah. When it come to assessment itu, janganlah tersimpang daripada kita punya objektif dan juga CLO kita. That is a very basic one. I have taken out that slide yang mengatakan bahawa it has to be aligned dengan kita punya CLO. Sebelum ni ada. Kalau tak panjang sangat slide saya. Ya. Yeah. Ya, di sana. 14 14 hours of digital content, 14 uh, 40% of learning activity is equal to 14 hours of uh, activity and 8 hours of e assessment. Okay. Alright. So agak-agaklah kita punya quiz tu 2 jam ke 1 jam ke kalau macam 1 jam saja kan satu lagi tu mungkin you have to tambah satu lagi lah kalau you are very particular on that part. Students can be anyway, mm. and then they can just assess the question lah. Mm -hmm. Sebab yang macam saya buat di semester, yes I did, I used that smart B3, but students still need to attend the the hall, so still can be controlled. Mm -hmm. Tapi kalau kita guna PTG, that means they can be everywhere. During one of the PTG tu lah, during one yeah. of the four ah, weeks tu. Kalau kita masuk assessment ah, lah, kalau yeah. midterm di situ, yeah. 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 untuk di situ. Mm -hmm. okay. Right, if you don't want that to be happen, jangan masuk dia dalam PTG. Okay? Sebab, remember, kita ada 10 to 14 topics. Yeah? PTG is only 4. What happened to the other 10 topics? So, the other 10 topics is still you can use the LMS ini. Tidak ber bererti, you can just stop kat 4 PTG saja. Uh -uh, yes. Yes. Ah, yang selain daripada PTG is not compulsory to follow this format. Yes. Yes, understand. So untuk that course yang banyak practice courses yang banyak practice tu you still go 1732 lah. You tak comply with uh, 404020. Dr. Sharon Ah ya, yeah. sebab um, Agnes and me we are having we sh we will share one course nanti kita akan buat begitu. Oh okay, so that is a little bit a uh, tricky. Uh, katalah satu course ada dua lecturer, okay? So the thing here is sama ada kita hendak maintain satu course sahaja, satu LMS sahaja, while both lecturer boleh masuk, okay? The question here is, what's about your ELNPT? Sebab you both of you are registered in SMP untuk dua course. When you only one satu saja uh, uh, LMS so I takut ada kekeliruan apabila pihak LMPT mesedut di sana but we will bring that into our meeting if it is possible to detect two name for one LMS Kalau kalau dia sharing macam mana? Uh, itulah inilah isu dia kalau sharing ni tapi kita akan try to solve that one Hmm. Tiga, 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 tiga gunakan satu sahaja kan So whoever yang develop more tu terpulang lah kan? so, ini macam mana? Boleh kita Yang ni boleh Boleh boleh. Tetapi masalah dia takut LNPT nanti Tidak LNPT e, e, tiga-tiga pun dapat ah, okay. If that the if that the case is even better Dan uh, kita punya uh, ini pun Server kita pun tak tak taklah berat sangat Okay Banyak, banyak Actually what we are trying to do is Untuk memudahkan That is Yeah Sebab we are in this together If you rasa susah We also rasa susah Sebab we also using that <laughs> Okay It's the same thing Okay so uh, Yeah So um, Kita akan adakan wujudkan uh, The icon so that when you click that one so we uh, automatically know that you that is that week is PTG okay
So that is one, one, one way. That is the best way. If that cannot be done, what we are going to do is maybe we just ask you to just put the label there. PTG1, PTG2, PTG3 lah. But we are trying, we are trying to talk to JTMK. If, uh, is there any possibility if you just click that thing, so that is automatically PTG and it alert us that that is PTG and only PTG will be audited at the end of the year or semester. Because the PTG, you actually divide by week, right? One week, one week, one week, and that is for weeks, right? So in the interface, the thing come out like only four weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. So uh, we will uh, in the thought we will show how to do that and when it's come back, it will come back to you later. Huh? So, but kita cadang hendak buat uh, uh, susunan the structure in the in the uh, LMS itu dalam ITEL itu berstruktur supaya student tidak pergi ke sana scroll up and down, scroll up and down here and then do not know where to go and where to which one to read. Yes, correct. Okay. Yang itu um, Dr. Dayang uh, dengan uh, uh, Masalah dia kan I'm scared uh, benda ini melibatkan kita ke ataupun uh, LMPT punya data Kalau status um, kalau status BL melibatkan smart um, e-learning lah e-learning ha. Jadi ada satu cara, kalau kita dapati, kita fail dalam LNPT, yeah. ada dua cara. Satu, kita cek dengan e-learning dulu, sama ada status BL tu BL atau tidak BL. Kalau BL, kami akan bantu um, periksa dalam LNPT pula. Tarikan dia. Contohnya, kalau belum ditarik daripada, dalam BL, BL. Eh, dalam dalam smart BL. Tapi dalam um, LNPT pula, LNPT pula fail. Maksudnya sistem LMPT itu dia belum tarik the latest punya data. Dalam peti yang tahun sebab itu? Dalam peti yang tahun sebab itu. Haa, senang. Ini ada yang dikeluarkan dari konten. Jadi dalam sepatu, dalam sepatu, dalam habis itu, dia punya sudah tahu ya. Dia pun dikeluarkan dari konten. So, bila dia keluarkan dari konten, maka nanti kita tinggalkan. Maksudnya? Ada juga bercakap lagi buat macam itu. They delete the content for, I don't know, for what reason. So when that happens, the bullock guarantee is a good thing. They don't automatically get that. So, it doesn't mean that we have to talk about it. They check whether they're going to get it. They're going to have that. They're going to have that. They're going to have that. And because this is the issues that are Alright, so 
So they explain you can forget this man. That's smart enough. You need to smart. But they're very interactive and very innovative. Yeah? So I tell, come up with colorful, uh, color coded. All the blue adalah untuk le, uh, mm, content, learning content. Okay? All the blue, all the uh, orange and greens are for the teaching and learning activity. Supaya tak confuse them, eh? And all the pinks adalah untuk e-assessment. Okay? Tiga komponen kan? Okay, now, ada berita sedikit. Ada a few blues ni yang nakal dia nak join yang lain. So you will find a few ada dua tak salah dua atau tiga empat empat icon berwarna biru. You will find di empat dan nakal berada bersama-sama the green and the orange. Dia tak mau geng dengan yang biru dia nak masuk geng saja. Okay, so if you click the card uh, activities, so tu dekat sini ada tu. Because then this uh, this interface will come out. Yeah. When you click the card resources, uh, there can the be inilah semua ni lah. When you click the card activities, you can nampak hanya the blue saja keluar. Okay. okay. So that one lebih senang untuk klik. Kan? Dulu kan sampai dah eight years ni. Eh? Apa dia buat? Satu dua tiga dua satu dua tiga dua tidak juga. Tiap tiap semester kena upload. Tiap tiap semester kena bagi the same. Satu ini apa, dua-dua ini apa. Kenapa saya tak duduk lagi? Kalau tidak cukup, yang dua. Kalau tidak cukup, yang tiga. So now, they are all comes in color. Okay? Alright, cuma kena hati-hatilah ada empat biru tu dia masuk dalam aktiviti. Tapi don't worry, ini pun kita akan bagi nanti infografi untuk memudahkan semua. Alright? Alright, so... Uh, Okay, this one yang tadi uh, profile ada mention. So, this will help us a lot. It help me a lot. Ya, dalam uh, kita develop, kita punya interactive teaching. Just start Alan Carrington. A-L-L-A-N-C-A-R-R-I-N-G. Alan Carrington. Double L, double R. Okay, so akan keluar lah benda ni. So, this part is very, very good. Okay. Dia sudah bantu kita a lot. Ada aktiviti, let's say uh, kita go, just now uh, perform bagi contoh, create kan. Kita go, let's say, analyze kat sana. So, under analyze kat sana, dia dah bagi dah. They are at, uh, activity work, uh, at jenis aktiviti that we can carry out, and also what are the platforms yang kita boleh log into untuk make our Uh, content becoming more interactive and interesting and fun and the most wonderful. Okay, so you can just go there. All right. Um, okay. Um, I always go with these quotations. It always inspire me, and I hope it will inspire you as well. Okay. We keep moving forward, opening new doors, and doing new things. Because we are curious and curiosity keeps leading us down the path. Every morning I look at this question. So I would like to share this with everyone. So it inspired me, it's moved me forward every day. Nak macam mana kalau bangun pagi itu, walaupun kesiangan macam hari ini contohnya. So it's keep me moving forward. Right, uh, there's one more thing that I'd like to share with everyone. Okay, this is the part. Okay. Uh, sorry, today I do something now. Uh, all in all, uh, this is to facilitate. So there will be a touch and one uh, on the implementation of the teaching coming up for all of us. And uh, next week there will be a memo coming from the Gujarat uh, NCE concerning the implementation of uh, ITEL fully for the semester and the PCG will be implemented in the next session. So, yeah, which one of you will be lucky time? I feel next semester. That's right, the platform is our next semester. And this PTG, not to worry, because fund one, a detail will come out and it will be implemented next session. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
over from <laughs> uh, to the three pakal over here. Okay. Thanks, bro. Okay. Thank you, sir, bro. Okay. Right, so uh, Thanks, back bro. to this one. This is, I would like to share how we could use uh, ITEL. Here's a brief one. From Tony Cassini, it says ITEL uh, is promoting or more on ICMT. So this is what we can actually use in our class. Okay, from Tony Cassini. So Toto I am using this topic because I'm embedding interactive computer mediated technology as CMT in the ITEL. Right, so um, what is ICMT? So ICMT is blah 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 can include a wide range of tools and platforms such as learning management system, in this case ITEL, social media platform, WhatsApp, ke, Telegram, ke, whatever, chat. Ke, Virtual reality tools, we are not, we are going towards that soon, I hope. And video conferencing software, Zoom, or Motorola Kazan Kazan Okay, so that is what ICMT is all about. That is what we are going to use in our ITEL starting, if possible, next semester. Okay, right, so can we click on the button to the button? So there, when so click on that hyperlink, it brings us to this. So if we scroll down, down this, I don't think so we need to go to this video, so it takes about 4 minutes and 23 seconds. Usually when I play that video, at 1 minute and 13 seconds, it's all over. So that is why I say, why 10 minutes video in one go is not the last go. Right, so um, back to the... Alright, next. <coughs> uh, kita kenal that guy yang in green itu. So, uh, we click on that one. This is how we use this guy in our class, in our teaching. Mm -hmm. Chat GPT. <laughs> Chat GPT. The Okay, so once we have a government stuff, you want to take it now, Just click. Password. <laughs> All right. Password, see that one? One, two, three, four, four. One, two, three, four, four. Okay. Okay, Salah. Jumpa di... Oh, no, no, no. So, um... Okay. Okay. Ini sudah pak passwordnya? Aina. Lupa, selalu ada kan. Bukan selalu kan log login tu macam baru aku login tadi. Atau remind. Komputer lain pula kan? Oh, ada apa? Oh, abis. Uh, accessibility anywhere and analytics. 
So these are some of the answers why we need to use I, C, and D ataupun interactive uh, in our to turn our teaching into interactive way. All the answers are there. And at the same time, I, I am also showing how we can embed uh, IL dalam our teaching at the same time. Yeah? So, uh, thank you, Dan. So, uh, now, I just can buy this idea two more minutes, please. That's wrong. Okay. That's wrong, please. Set me up, too. This is my LMS. So I tell that I've been using this method. Okay? And, uh, kalau kita tengok dekat sana, the first one, uh, scroll down tu. Okay. Kita ada the attention kat sana. That is, kita punya, this is, I, I am sharing with you the structure macam mana kita letakkan kita punya, uh, kita mewujudkan structure di dalam susun kita punya uh, LMS tu supaya tidak tukar kabut. Okay? So, Atas, of course, announcement. Since this course is hybrid, so I have that one, my students can log in that uh, webpack any time of the, during the lesson, and then those young in Indonesia everywhere too, they can access at the same time, I am having my class D, C, N. Okay, and my students here would, contohnya, mereka pun boleh access, kalau jangan malas tengok saya tekan pada depan, dia boleh tengok dalam the main tab saja. It's the same thing. So, I am doing hybrid classes. This is good at the same time. Yeah. Dia berlaku, apa tu? Synchronous week. Tidak lakau. Webex tu ada dalam pada masa yang sama. Student di Indonesia access that one. Pada masa saya mulai dari sini. So, buka laptop sejalan? Yes, don't buka laptop sejalan. It happened at the same time. Real time. Real time. Real time. The webpack is embedded di dalam ajar. Okay? So, what I am trying to show here is all these things from the very beginning tadi Uh, the talk from the very beginning adalah menggunakan platform ICAR we are not using other platform if you realize from the beginning what you can using ICAR tetapi dia menggunakan Canva while I am also daripada awal tadi bercakap menggunakan ICAR we are presenting on the ICAR platform ni and that is using I'm using generally So there are two platforms. Meaning to say, kita after this tak payah lagi bawa thumb drive. We just log in dalam ITEL saja and teach through ITEL. Okay? So that is what ITEL can do. No more thumb drive. Kita work, let's say, on generally platform. The FIAP or our note dalam generally. Some further and create the dalam ITEL. And then, during the class, kita log in to ITEL It will be appear here as what you've been watching from the beginning tadi Okay? We are working this on ITEL from the very beginning tadi Alright? So no more thumb drive Tak payah cloud And at the same time you are also helping the student untuk Nanti dah ada lah kat dalam ni Dia masuk dia Just go on topic sikit Boleh, boleh. Saya boleh tolong buat. Saya charge. Okay, topik tu for example. Okay, during the class, what I do is I just masuk kita kat sana. Besar kantor. So I'm teaching them ini. The same thing as what happening from the beginning, from the very beginning to this. What I tell, okay? So masuk dalam ni. And then blah 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 masuk masuk. I just ada macam biasa. Then I have this related stories. And then click dekat sana. I click. Then I can go to the other side. Alright. Other thing. Okay. Tapi the students can go to the side that I wanted them to read. Side mana yang I wanted them to read? On one of the ni 
inilah kodus teologis saya lah ya saya dah jin kan tiga tahun of course saya tahu ring tu di mana saya tahu page tu di mana kan okay next tu selain daripada ini I also has video embedded for them so at the same time we know our student very well ada dua kumpulan satu kumpulan ni I hate reading I don't like reading is there any less wordy Is there any less sentences? Is there a uh, short note? Sometimes kita pun tak nak buat Are you doing the university? Kalau tak suka baca kan? Right. So, I supply them This way to it So, this is 10 minutes, 10 minutes Less than 10 minutes Less than 10 minutes 10 minutes tu? The first one, tak ingat lah Okay Oh, 6 minutes Sorry, less than 10 minutes 6 minutes Okay? Tak payah kemana tu? So, right So, uh, what I'm trying to say is tadi, we cater two group of students at the same time. I cater two group of the, of the students at the same time. Satu yang tak suka membaca, but they like to watch and listen. They can get everything bila they listen and watch. Fine. And satu lagi group yang kalau datang, kelas tidak ada notes, they cakap tidak ada kelas. So, when are you going to upload the notes? So, when are you going to upload the notes? Kita kan kelas dah dua minggu lepas dah boleh dah pergi Kan? They need something to read Okay? We have that Kita tak payah pun nak buat Kita di sini sahaja Kita saya baca lah kat sana Sebanyak-banyak yang tak baca Alright? So that's settled And solve that problem And at the same time We also know what we are doing Of course Si Elbow kita mesti Tepat lah Kan? Sejajar Selama dengan Awal si Elbow Right, I think that is all from me. Uh, and thank you so much. And next is one Sunday, ready? So um, more critical, guys. <laughs> critical. Emu pakai mikrofon. Sudah, ada dapat saya punya lah. Saya, saya kena buat lawak dulu. Okey, saya ikut. Kita take five dulu. Ini kognitif overload sudah ni. Since pukul sembilan tadi. Assalamualaikum dan selamat pagi. Um, sharing saya simple sahaja sebenarnya tentang table form semua orang sudah familiar sebenarnya dengan table form I just want to make sure that um, peralihan daripada 172 itu kepada 4042 itu ter ada di dalam table form kita yang mana sebelum ini tidak ada jadi kita we have that missing link kita kata kita mengajar PTG um, 172 online semua tapi hanya ada di dalam smart link tapi tidak ada dalam bukti dalam kita punya uh, table form So that's why kita buat PTG ni Adalah untuk memulih, menunjukkan bahawa bila ada auditor datang Regardless from MQA ataupun ISO uh, Bila kita katakan kita buat pengajaran memang ada online Dia ada dinyatakan dalam kita punya table form Dan ada juga buktinya di dalam um, ITEL nanti So um, saya suka kalau um, saya, saya suka ada item sebab dia akan simpan semua dokumen saya kalau auditor mau cek ah, semua saya beli print saja daripada saya punya item. Um, cuma dari segi bila audit perlu print ataupun tidak, jadi persoalan itu perlu ditanya kepada pihak CQA lah sebab itu berkaitan tentang audit. But, but dari segi pelaksanaan tentang PTG ini kita boleh lihat dari segi uh, daripada table force saja. Okey, um, biasanya bagi tak lihat dekat dengan slide, tapi ini saya berada di depan slide. Jadi, bi betul-betul menguji sama ada saya faham slide saya atau pun tidak. Okey, um, PTG adalah perkataan yang mana saya fikir orang hanya sekadar dengar-dengar, tapi um, dan kalau orang first time nampak dalam slide, dia akan fikir itu petang. Kan? But actually, um, Penting, nah, penting pun bagus juga itu. Dan, tapi kenapa kita perlu buat PTG sebab um, kita sudah sangat familiar dengan 1732 
172 dan data menunjukkan yang kita memang sudah excel dalam 172 di mantra. Semua data yang terkecuali. Apa buktinya? Semua sudah 100%. So bila kita sudah sampai keadaan 100% itu, what's next? Oh, you can come listen. Saya sudah capek tidak kaya kau tak apa-apa. So we want to be a better educator dalam mengajar secara online ini. So sebenarnya alternatifnya ada, cuma di UMS kita belum um, berani untuk melaksanakannya lebih awal. Kenapa saya katakan belum berani? Sebab um, isu tentang blended learning ini sudah teruskan tu, sudah wujud sejak tahun 2014 sebenarnya. Jadi um, saya punya agenda untuk cakap saya rasa tidak banyak. Sebelum pukul dua saya kata sudah habis. <laughs> Um, adalah satu saya akan menunjukkan senario um, blended learning di Malaysia sebab kita perlu lihat kita tidak shock sendiri kita 100% how are we in comparison to other universities saya akan share keadaan itu dan saya akan jelaskan why kenapa kita kena berubah daripada 1732 kepada 404020 sebab kalau dari segi nombor total berbeza tidak ada nombor yang sama kan 1732 dan 4040 But the thing is, dari segi pengajaran, kita tetap mengajar. Tidak ada perubahan dari segi kita jumpa student macam mana, lecture notes kita macam mana, tidak ada. Yang berubah adalah dari segi pengiraan, sama ada itu dianggap sebagai pembelajaran teradun gantian ataupun pembelajaran teradun semua. So next zone. Um, apa yang dilaksanakan oleh e-learning ini bukan berdasarkan daripada mimpi-mimpi indah, tetapi berdasarkan apa yang ada yang sudah ada di peringkat kebangsaan. Jadi berkaitan dengan pembelajaran teradil gantian ini, ini ada garis panduan khas di peringkat kebangsaan. Ini diterbitkan yang warna putih di sebelah itu, diterbitkan oleh RJPT pada tahun 2020. Jadi semua tentang siapa yang perlu laksanakan, apa tanggungjawab setiap individu, setiap um, faculty dan setiap pusat itu sudah dinyatakan dalam garis panduan. Dan ini dikongsi bersama oleh setiap universiti. Um, jadi bila nama ada garis panduan, kita perlu mengadaptasi garis panduan itu sesuai dengan konteks UMS. Sebab nature kita di UMS berbeza dengan UMK, dengan UPM. So we have to look into bagaimana PTG ini boleh dilaksanakan di UMS. Jadi um, kalau mau tahu tentang macam kaitan pengajaran yang menarik, PNP itu baca yang buku yang playbook pengajaran dan pembelajaran tentang 130 muka surat Tetapi untuk PTG saja Sebab kalau ada masa, baca semualah Tapi uh, kalau masa baca malam Tidak PTG terus tidak baca <tuk> Tapi untuk PTG baca Chapter 1.5 Semua ada di sana 1.5 Cuma bear in mind uh, Rujukan table 4 adalah Rujuk kepada universiti di Senanyo Berbeza dengan UMS So just take macam mana dia laksanakan Tapi dari segi pengiraan PTG itu Goes back dengan table for di UMS. Itu yang, tapi dari segi cara pengajaran apa aktiviti, this is a very good book in terms of pengajaran secara online. Next one. Nah, ini saya katakan kronologi the why. 2014 sudah ada dalam PSPTN. Jadi kita um, sebenarnya macam um, macam saya dalam dalam 2014 sampai 2017 itu memang dah masih lagi jadi dunia lah tentang online ini sebab saya ikut sahaja betul cuma apabila tahun 2018 saya uh, UMS libat dalam satu bengkel berkaitan tentang PTG dan PTS bagaimana mekanisme untuk menentukan satu kan pengajaran itu PTG mana satu yang PTS dan in 2008 saya ditanya adakah UMS bersedia untuk melaksanakan PTG dan respon saya pada masa itu adalah sebab saya, saya, saya dilatih 2018 sebagai penjelas um, kami baru saja perkenalkan 1732 kalau saya perkenalkan yang baru lagi since baru beberapa tidak belum sampai setahun saya akan dikecam ramai-ramai oleh UMS dan saya tidak mau itu berlaku sebab UMS akan ada mentaliti UMS kita ni ada perubahan kita ubah ada perubahan kita ubah tanpa betul-betul memahami kenapa kita buat terus berubah. So I don't want that to be, to be the case dalam PTG. So kita berjaya pun tahu, UMS pun tahu, pun tahu bersilat and then 
Ada New Zealand sudah start, ada yang New Zealand sudah start 2018, 2019 pelaksanaan. Dan now it's only 2023, lima tahun after the first birthday. Um, dan tahun lepas saya fikir UMS ditanya lagi. Sebenarnya kita antara yang lima industri yang belum ada, yang belum buat PTG. So saya bila melihat kepada data kita, kita sudah 100%. Kalau saya minta itu, kan? Ada saya, jadi apa masalah untuk kita berubah menjadi lebih baik? So this is the time. Kita ada keberanian itu sebab kita telah, kita telah diuji semasa pandemi. Semua orang belajar online. So kalau orang boleh buat 100% online, apa yang saja boleh buat 300%. That is the idea. Jadi untuk inisiat perubahan bukan mudah. That's why um, so kita perlu jelaskan. One seven three two itu apa? Forty forty twenty itu apa? One seven three two itu adalah tiga puluh peratus daripada jumlah jam bersemuka. Yaitu kita khusus tiga jam kredit kita jumpa empat belas minggu tiga dari empat belas adalah empat puluh dua jam. Tiga puluh peratus daripada empat puluh dua jam adalah dua belas point enam jam kita bulatkan jadi 13 jam. That 13 jam is 1, campur 7, campur 3, campur 2. That is 1732. Dan in language cavity, 1732 itu adalah pembelajaran teradun sokongan. So, all this while, kita ada telah melaksanakan PTS. Kita memang sangat percaya, sangat cuma lah melaksanakan PTS. Um, jadi um, sekarang ini kita mengubah pada BTG yang mana formula dia 40, 40, 20. Uh, sama juga, kita mengira 30 peratus, 30 peratus daripada pengajaran kita mesti online. So, tetapi kalau yang BTG ini, instead of kita menggunakan jumlah jam bersuka, kita menggunakan SLT, Student Learning Time. Nah, di mana satu-satunya tempat kita jumpa SLT dalam kehidupan kita? di table 4. That's why kita kena bacanya bersama table 4. Kita tahu ya sudah. So, bagaimana kita apply 40-40-20 untuk 120 jam kredit? Eh, matilah berapa puluh jam ini. Kan? Jadi, apa yang kita buat sebenarnya? Kelihatan ini mudah. 30% daripada 120 jam kredit dapat 36 jam kredit untuk khusus 3 jam kredit ah dapatlah 36 jam. So bermakna untuk PTG melalui melalui kita di table 4 36 jam itu mesti secara online. Ah secara online. So di sana selepas itu barulah kita apply form formula 40 40 20 tadi. 40% daripada 36 jam material equals to 14.4 Empat puluh ratus daripada tiga puluh enam jam equal to empat belas puluh empat. Ini kiraan matematik ni. Semua ada orang yang bilang nombor tu dia pun dia tu tidak perlu lagi. Dan berapa ya? Dua puluh ratus. Kau foto kan? Dua puluh ratus daripada tiga puluh enam equal to seven point two. So campur 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 dapat tiga puluh enam. Jadi kalau kita tidak biarkan kawan kawan kita perlu bersahabat dengan kalkulator bila mengira. So kita sediakan table. So you can use the table based on um, your jam kredit. Next one. Ah, okay. Nah, contohnya begini. Yang saya bagi contoh tadi kiraan, bila kita mau kira sendiri. So table for kita dalam Excel, dia akan auto kira. Okay. So uh, so if your class is three credit hours, um, 14 jam adalah untuk material, 14 jam lagi adalah untuk student engagement, Um, 8 jam adalah untuk asesmen. Jadi um, bagaimana untuk kita mempraktikkan dalam dunia nyata so on paper, untuk transfer ke dunia nyata berapa jam, berapa kali kelas kita boleh ganti. Bagaimana dinyatakan oleh Cik Amir tadi sebelum ini kita memang bagat guna hilsa. Ya, berapa kali ya kita boleh ganti kelas? Dan memang kami berusaha. Sebab saya men bertemu dengan soalan itu bila ada auditor MQA bertanya di manakah sumber kita yang menyatakan boleh ganti kelas? Tujuh kuasa itu. Mungkin ada dan saya belum jumpa. So, kalau saya jumpa, saya akan maklumkan semula. But to this extent, hari ini, saya belum jumpa. So, bila melihat kepada kekaburan itu, kita melihat perlu ada satu tujuh kuasa yang menyatakan kita boleh ganti. So, how do we do that? 
kita buat satu news gitu. Sebab itu kita bawa um, garis panduan pelaksanaan PTG US dan telah diluluskan Senat Disember tahun lepas. Bagaimana saya diluluskan? Kita bawa dari tahun 2021 melalui beberapa siri hadal semua pertanyaan perbaikan semua diluluskan tahun lepas. Uh, idea asal idea ni dah mahu di semester depan ni, tetapi terlalu singkat untuk kita laksanakan perubahan. So kita buat kerja untuk memberikan kesedaran dan kita akan buat on semester depan ni kita boleh praktis lah sudah. You can go into the table four and then praktis. Sebab kalau kita tengok kepada table four yang upgrade version ni dia berbeza sedikit dengan yang um, saya tidak tahu saya tidak pasti di sini tapi di fakulti saya dulu table four kami tidak ada warna jadi putih dia. Dan ada tiga saja tab, index, form, asal satu lagi macam tu, saya sudah lupa. Itu sahaja. But now dia ada banyak tab dan dia warna-warna. Dan saya suka setiap automatic kira untuk PTG. Jadi kita tidak payah kira lagi. Bila kita isi, kita punya table form, kita boleh payah kira. Okay, fine. Next, Zul. Eh, ini sudah yang kedua, sudah ni kan bagaimana untuk membentuk uh, kita punya table form. Kalau tu credit hours ini, saya rasa di fakulti ini masih ada untuk credit hours. So you can use this formula. Kalau dulu 1732 dia one size fits all. Satu credit hours ka, dua credit hours ka, six credit hours dia masih guna formula 1732. Tapi untuk yang dua jam credit dia akan tertipu sen dia itu akan berubah itu ini. So kalau macam di fakulti ini dia memang ada syarat wajib, syarat wajib kalau tidak kalau tidak follow itu dia berdosa. Tertipu sen itu. So dia 10 10 4. 10-10-4-4 jam 30% daripada Berapa jam kreditnya? 2 jam kredit SLP ya 80 Tak sebenarnya sebab tu benar lagi Sebab satu kredit hours is 14 hours 14 kredit 40 jam kan? Jadi dia akan jadi 30% daripada 80 kredit Equals to 24 Okay, jadi ini just follow sahaja. So pilihan dia macam ni. So kita tidak ada strict, uh, mesti juga guna nombor bulat, nombor kotak bulat untuk diterima juga dengan kita punya kita. Dan ini contoh lagi kepada yang lain. Empat kredit. So ada fakulti, ada four kredit, ada, dan ada juga fakulti paling last enam. Ada fakulti bagi kau dia ada lapan kredit. So I have to look into it. Tapi kalau dia adalah Kursus yang memang banyak um, hands on, dia mesti lebih 70% otomatik dia tidak akan memenuhi PTG. So saya akan cerita um, bagaimana dengan kursus yang tidak memenuhi PTG selepas ni. Okay, um, saya tunjukkan. Ini bahagian ketiga sudah ni paling last. Cepat ni, iaitu simulation um, kita table for yang upgraded version. Masuk yang Double four yang saya bawa tadi kan Sama saja Sama saja Sama saja Sebab dulu bila kita buat CAP Kita kira manual CAP kita kena kira manual In terms of Wettage 40% kita berapa jam sekarang dia otomatik kira dalam sini Yes, dia ada bagi recommendation Dia akan auto kira Oh, auto kira Wettage, nanti saya tunjuk dalam CAP Di sini tidak nampak ni Nanti saya tunjuk satu-satu Just table for terjadi Oktober ni Sebab dibangunkan pada 13 Oktober Actually ini bukan dibangunkan oleh PEP Sebab bila berkaitan dengan akademik Sifunya adalah di PPKN Dan table for ini sebenarnya dibangunkan Dengan bantuan daripada pengarah PPKN Dr. Dennis dan juga di refine dengan bantuan bantuan PDA PDA. So sebenarnya sebelum ini keluar ke public dia telah di 
di meeting kan di saya satu meeting saya tu bukan kamu sudah kita dalam kelas tu. Kami itu lebih perang tentang bagaimana meletakkan itu ini sebab ada beberapa isu yang tidak bersetel. So dan dia bila isu yang tidak bersetel berkaitan dengan akademik kita akan serahkan kepada PPK untuk make the arrangement. Tapi bila berkaitan dengan teknikal memang PP yang akan Um, akan buat mereka. So sebenarnya saya membantu PPKE untuk menjelaskan table for version 13 Oktober ini. Um, form, di form. Ini macam biasa lah dari atas kita masukkan kita punya maklumat, okay. masukkan semua. Oh, di jenis, biar all sel, dulu lagi form dulu. Okay. Okay. Uh, masukkan sampai ujung tu, kasih. Jadi masukkan semua. Macam semalam saya punya ketua program bagi tahu bagian LOC itu kena isi sudah tu. Saya tidak isi. Jadi semalam kami meeting ini kata perlu diisi. Sebab in the end bila berkaitan dengan akademik, we have to follow our faculty, our DDA punya arrangement lah for the faculty. Um, teaching and learning tu? Uh, this is where the magic comes bila kita menunjukkan kita capai PTG ataupun tidak. So, um, lupa pula, dalam jadual sebelum ini, kalau kita pilih 30%, okay, kita boleh gantikan 4 kuliah. 4 kuliah. So, saya pilih, so, saya pilih daripada 14 minggu itu, 4 sahaja topik yang saya tahu student boleh belajar secara online. Boleh belajar sendiri. Kalau aktiviti itu memang memerlukan mesti um, berdepan, misalnya contohnya mengenal pasti risk, Eh, tadi sini lah. Mungkin masih risiko. Setiap student tidak ada dengan saya untuk melihat dia pandai atau tidak untuk kenal pasti risiko. So, saya tidak akan guna topik itu untuk online. Saya akan pilih macam ni. Um, saya pilih theoretical. Huh? Dia perlu baca. Um, dua, historical background. Dia boleh baca. Um, dan saya juga pilih um, tracking dan recognition. Ini pirakan kesatuan kerja. Dan juga current issues. Itu topik-topik yang saya saya lihat sebab itu paper saya Student akan boleh belajar sendiri So you are the subject matter of your course So you know which topic yang you know student boleh belajar sendiri And which topic yang memang tidak boleh belajar sendiri So next tu, um, saya letak sini, if you look at this Bahagian physical tu yang saya pilih untuk PTG saya memang tidak ada, saya kosongkan Tapi saya macam jelas kuasa sikit juga lah, saya mau juga juga student, citrenas So saya letak di mana saya ganti kartu saya buat lecture di PTG. Sudah lapan jam sana kan? Lepas tu saya juga rasa macam tidak cukup lagi masih. So saya masih banyak juga bagi bahan lain. Saya bagi video, saya bagi log action notes. So dia saya masukkan dia juga dalam online teknologi yang asset trainers materials. So bila kita campur antara yang L tu dengan asset trainers materials, bawah tu lapan campur enam. Dia jadi 14 by 4. So, fulfill satu requirement for exam. Hanya based on material, pengajaran kita. Habis. 40% yang pertama, 40, 40, 20. 40 yang kedua adalah di bahagian activities. Yang 14 by 4 lah. Sana activities. Sebab untuk memudahkan saya, bagi setiap topik yang saya online kan, dia ada activity. How do I know students yang baca saya punya bahan? So I ask them to do, uh, saya buat activity, buka forum, berdasarkan video yang ditayangkan pada pandangan anda, mengapakah? So student uh, only have to answer them, um, um, bagi pandangan dia kenapa. So ada engagement, we know the student read. So kalau kita ada 100 student 50 masuk, it's good. Maksudnya dia ada yang membaca di sini. Dan, tapi kadang-kadang bila kita baca, eh macam, saya tidak puas hati lah. So we want to check whether they really understand kita buat ke quiz takut ke apa Not automatic, kita yang letak It's not us, kita yang letak berapa jam It is hours 1.4 hours ah. So 1.4 hours memang dia ada kiraan minutes dia lah But itu table 4 kiraan dia adalah numbers So I put it 1.4 hours So it depends on us sebenarnya Okay Cuma kalau misalnya kalau dia banyak aktiviti dia akan lagi banyak jam lah di sana. Okay. Uh, dalam PTG dia hanya kira the minimum aktiviti 
Dia tidak mesti you have to feel banyak But it depends on you Macam saya Kalau dia kurang saya bagi bahan Mungkin aktiviti dia akan banyak So the jam will be there Jam dia akan banyak So dia akan sampai 14 That's why it's up to you You can choose Tidak suka titik perpuluhan Fine Letak sejam 14 jam Ah itu. Okay, in PTGIS, PTGIS, dia dianggap um, boleh diganti sama ada you do semua synchronous, uh, synchronous, synchronous, ataupun um, semua asynchronous. So ada orang dia pilih dia tidak mau buat teks online langsung asynchronous tu. Asing. Jadi dia pergi asing di sebelah tu. Jadi dia boleh kosong sana dan sana empat belas. Either one. Saya punya saya campur. Saya ada juga lecture, saya ada bahan. So it's up to you. Tidak 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 salah untuk empat minggu saya memang tidak mahu jumpa sudah. Itu tidak salah di mata PTG. Um, nanti nanti. Belum lagi habis. Jadi sekarang ini. Um, kalau yang table four sebelum ini, bahkan naik atas tuan Independent learning itu dikunci So for the sake of PTG, sebab kami buat pusing learning dan PD lain Kita tidak akan dapat buat PTG itu di um, PTG di table four So kita, itu sudah di unlock, so independent learning itu kita yang tentukan sendiri Kita yang tentukan sendiri So um, letaklah based on Sebab apa yang kita letak sini, walaupun saya kata ikutlah kepala sendiri Actually, apa yang kita letak ini akan reflect dalam kita punya CAP Cost Assessment Plan Wattage jam untuk markah itu berapa, sesuai atau tidak So, um, tapi kalau bagaimana untuk tips dia Supaya untuk, untuk pastikan kita punya kursus itu boleh capai PTJ Saya mula dengan Bila ini kosong, saya mula pilih empat topik pertama yang saya mau PTJ Saya isi itu dulu dan saya dapat itu beberapa jam Saya buat itu dulu Sebab yang lain akan tetap Lecture is still lecture, tutorial is still Tutorial kan? Yang, yang akan berubah di sini adalah kebanyakan adalah di independent learning Di independent learning Dia sana, jadi pengubah sawat Pengubah sawatnya itu akan banyak berlaku di sana Bila kita membuat alignment So, um, ini dari segi teaching and learning um, So, kita sudah dapat the, 40, the first sudah ada 40% yang kedua pun sudah dapat di sini ya so sekarang dua kita pergi assessment di mana itu lapan jam berlaku saya jadi tujuh jam lah tujuh dan dua um, dia berlaku di sini sebab saya PL satu PLO dua dan PLO empat so imposter saya memang di PLO satu group assignment saya pun um, group assignment saya memang di PLO dua cuma saya suka pertanyaan NCIS cek boleh study tentang Demos ES itu mesti pada yang ada kognitif Cuma ada satu, saya itu tiga satu Mungkin ini perlu bu duduk bersama dengan cek plus um, um, Workshop, peer assessment So, peer assessment tidak berlaku dalam kognitif dalam muka saya Peer assessment berlaku dalam peer 4 Kemahiran itu bersebut So, itu beda kan ada kekecualian sebenarnya Peer assessment sebab dalam kita punya um, ITL baru, sebenarnya dalam smart tribal ada, kita ada satu fungsi membuat peer assessment online Jadi yang datang pergi kursus nanti bengkel, nanti kita akan ada macam mana guna Pakarnya pun ada di sini sebenarnya, sebab kami belajar bersama-sama Okay, but um, Ini bahagian independent learning memang auto kira Kiraan dia macam mana? Bagi 10% marka Bersamaan dengan 3.6 jam bebannya So macam tengok kursus saya um, 10% 3.6, 20% jadi 7.2 30% jadi 10.8 3.6 itu dalam tiga Itu kiraan formula untuk um, Excel ini lah So bila masukkan begini um, Terus turun zoom Itu ano lah Dapat sudah total CRT 36 itu ada kiraan dia di sini Dia bagi tahu tuh recommended berapa Dia kasih tahu um, Di teaching and learning pun ada di Turun dulu, so di teaching and learning Saya turun bawah tadi Oke, okay, di sini 
itu waktu kelas 14 waktu SMT dan imaterial sudah sudah bagi paham itu 14 bagi 4 dia bagi tau kita sudah nampak at the same page mana kita buat perubahan sampai ke cap zone si ini kos SS mutan dulu kita buat manual kan jadi dia akan bukan sih ya ini mungkin sekali ini mungkin sekali dia akan tunjukkan lah dia akan tunjukkan capai atau tidak kalau kita berada jalan yang benar dia warna hitam kalau dia merah tuh kita maknanya beban kita dengan markah kita tidak wajib dia tidak sesuai mungkin markah terlalu tinggi jam pembelajarannya rendah so you adjust di mana di independent dan di style adjust di sana ya di sana adjust di sana semua lecture is still lecture still dua jam dia jalan berapa itu pun di independent dan di style okay dan ini saya kata magicnya itu sebab kita capai ke tidak 40, 40, 20, SLT summary Dua bawah sekali Dia bagi tau 14 by 4, 14 by 4, 7 by 2 So dia akan bermana you already sudah capai Ini sebab saya guna titik perpuluhan 1.6 jam tadi itu macam tu saya But if you choose to 14, 14, 8 pun boleh As long as dia 36 dan proportion dia ada 40 Total dapat 36 Ini contoh untuk yang 3 jam kredit Untuk 2 jam kredit maknanya Your total SLT is 24 hours And it should be 10, 10, 4 Betul? Ya Assessment tu? Di assessment Naik di assessment zone ke situ ke atas Naik ke atas Naik ke atas sana satu IAS men mana dia kira ni? Tujuh poin dua tu atas kan? Dua twenty percent. Wah itu kan? Kalau belum makan tu. Siapa tu teman? Ani ni di bawah ni satu campur six poin dua tu. Itu jadi seven seven poin dua. Oh yang yang online? Di online. Synchronize dengan exim kan? Satu plus six poin dua kan? Ya. Di PTL. Di sini dia tidak sebab ini tidak kira assessment. Ini part yang mana kita masukkan kita punya material dan aktiviti saja. Jadi dia ambil kira semua bila sudah sampai SLT summary itu. Dia campur dua part tu. Ini dia campur sudah dua. Forty forty ada di satu di TNL assessment di memang di assessment sendiri. Sudah akan kira based on batch. Forty forty lapan. Assessment lapan enam. Di assessment. Di assessment. Bukan di assessment. Sini tak tujuh puluh dua sini. Sini tak. This is for the teaching materials and activities saja. Yang tujuh puluh dua tu, assessment tu dari di assessment. Di masuk assessment tu. Tujuh puluh dua itu adalah satu campur enam puluh dua di dalam synchronous asynchronous. Satu tu kita, yang berwarna putih kita, yang lain dia akan tidak kira. Kalau misalnya kita, let's see coba, zoom coba tukar untuk lemak jadi sepuluh, ya, dua puluh tu jadi sepuluh. Siapa? Lemak tu, lemak tu sepuluh. Siapa? Bukan itu, ah, dia lah. Sana di sebelah satu. Sepuluh. Ah, jadi sepuluh. Okay, jadi sepuluh, pasti tu jadi jauh sekali. Pijak apa pijak? Kita online dulu. Pada lain saya itu di luar dari pada IPJ. Okay? Ini kamu tengok kamu cakap tu satu. Jadi bila saya tukar satu tadi, dia punya tu learning tu jadi tiga poin enam. Total SLT jadi tiga poin enam. Dia otomatik kira. Okay? Yang besoknya ada three hours tu face to face. Boleh masuk tu sebenarnya. Tapi bila masuk saya tidak masuk masuk tu. Tapi dalam yang di bawah tu sebab kita bukan ada online lagi kan dia ada tiga awas dia ada tiga awas tapi dia tidak ada kira dalam kira alih kiri. Berubah tu dah tiga tiga proses macam ni kan? Face to face untuk belum masuk saya tidak termasuk tu saya pun baru nampak ni lepas. Besok tu ni ada sebab saya ada face to face exam 
Jadi memang suka. Zul cuma harus masuk face to face to face. Zul exam 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 di bawah di bawah. Oh sekali di bawah. Aku dah suka dua kali masuk tiga. Ah dua exam kan tiga 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 jam. Jadi cuma itu di bawah dia masuk mana? Satu. Dia otomatik ya. Dia auto otomatik. Dia otomatik otomatik masuk ya. Saya penjelasan saya saya lebih set konsentrat kepada yang PTG sebenarnya. Yang pada PTG. How do you achieve that PTG? 36 hours, 24 hours. Yang lain pun macam biasa sebenarnya. Tidak ada bezanya dengan kita punya table for sebelum ini. Whatever you put in, itu lah yang akan keluar. Cuma the good thing about this is, dia sudah kira CFP, SFP, summary, dan ujung sekali akan dapat table for yang lengkap. Selalu. Yang dia dapat itu, kalau audit, audit akan cek itu selalu. Yang lain itu panduan sahaja. Yang akan kita print untuk table for adalah yang paling ujung sahaja. So, Puan, yang assessment tu, maksudnya tadi memang kognitif kan, jadi contoh Kalau dia punya CLO 3 lah contoh, dia punya level itu adalah efektif So, kita tidak akan masuk lah, untuk yang PTG lah So, kita tidak assessment yang kognitif kan Yang PLO yang boleh ada assessment yang kognitif PLO 1, PLO 2 dan PLO 7 Kalau 3, kalau 3 So, itu yang sebelah lah, don't do it deh Jangan menyusahkan diri sendiri, tiba-tiba I have to justify it Terus, okay Saya rasa itu sahaja sebenarnya untuk Tunjuk bagaimana in real life dia boleh dibuat dalam khusus kita So, dia punya trik adalah try with your course Dapat ataupun tidak Ada kekecualian Kalau khusus itu sulam Okay Sulam ini, dia punya TOR jelas Face to face mesti lebih 70% So, kalau begitu dia mesti face to face lebih 70% dalam table 4 Automatik dia tidak akan follow PTG Alah, matilah saya gagalnya, saya tidak rasa membuat sulam Kan? No, it's not that Kalau memang sudah disahkan oleh fakulti bahwa ini khusus sulam Automatik, your course will be categorized as a PTS So you only have to follow the 1732. Cuma be in mind, 1732 bermakna dia tidak boleh ganti kelas. Kalau dia bilang dia kata dia guna PTG, boleh ganti kelas. Based on your table four. So apa apa pun sebenarnya bila berkaitan dengan penggantian kelas, misalnya deliverables kita, sempurna. On paper kita beli buat paling sempurna sebenarnya. On delivery kita mesti kadang-kadang tidak akan dapat. Buat pada masa kita janjikan So kita nanti Dia masalah di sana But um, Nanti bila audit dia, Masalahnya akan timbul bila audit Dia tanya Eh tidak pun buat Oh ya saya ganti So uh, this Tunjukkan bukti yang itu telah diganti Dan itu ada dalam tab your ITEL Benar tu bukti yang dia telah digantikan Itu saja Sebab yang paling Ya Ya, hmm. Itulah, kalau kita sudah prepare di awal bahan semua online It's good, kita sakit pun kelas jalan Kan? Especially bila kita tidak buat face to face Maksudnya dia tidak boleh laksanakan PTG dia Saya tidak faham Do you talking about yang 70% face to face Ataupun mengajar yang 30% Kalau yang mengajar 30% kan Kita sudah pilih bahan kita online kan Bermakna kalau sudah ada online Kita tidak boleh ganti lah Jadi memang sana Because you already plan You already planned it dalam your table four. Kalau yang empat minggu tu sudah dipenuhi, maknanya you have to replace. Tapi 
kalau tidak misalnya at least ya um, itu kelas face to face patutnya but we still tapi kita rancang dia dia rancang rancang dia untuk face to face tapi kita tidak dan face to face um, dan kita mau ganti kita mau ganti itu yang akan jadi kita mau kontrol supaya orang tidak minggu-minggu sakit lah tujuh belas sembilan puluh ratus daripada masa dia jual pada dan jatuh pada tarik di mana dia ada kelas jadi itu sebab itu kawalannya pada di mana dia kan Ya. Itu, itu, itu soalan yang sama yang Jack Lewis katakan So kalau BDG, we already plan kursus mana kalau, kalau tengok kursus saya tadi Minggu ketiga dan minggu keempat saya sudah buat online Sebab saya tahu mau cuti raya Dan saya, dan saya, saya, dan saya tahu topik itu memang orang belajar online Saya sudah plan awal Dan saya, saya mana sih saya mesti start cuti awal tanpa memikirkan um, um, Kelas saya itu dalam datang kelas semua So dia yeah, automatically online So it makes things easier, life easier Ya, sebab di luar daripada PTG itu. Okay? So kadang-kadang kalau kita jatuh, kita let's say kita jatuh sakit pada kursus yang mesti hands on. Tak kalau kita mau ganti online, ya. Terus juga, it falls under the seventy percent ni tu. Ya, sebab kami tujuan kami adalah how do you Substitute your four hours class students secara terkualiti. Dia mesti ada bahan, dia ada engagement student dan dia ada assessment itu. So selalunya kita hanya bagi bahan saja kan, tapi kita tidak tahu dibaca atau tidak. Kita tahu bila kita datang kelas minggu depannya itu langsung tidak baca. So we want to make things um, itu cara kita untuk membantu supaya student dia engage dalam kita punya pembicaraan dan pembelajaran. We are trying, we try to deliver. Dia memang tidak boleh ganti. If you ask me, macam mana film mengajar online dengan face to face? Kita rasa face to face itu lebih macam lebih sampai. How do you know sampai kita tidak macam sekarang ni? Kalau saya buat kelas, saya buat ujian, berapa persen yang akan lulus bila saya sudah buat table four? Kan? So, berkesan atau tidak berkesan tu memang kita akan dapat kita uji lah. So, kalau mau ganti pilih topik yang kita boleh buat secara online. That will be my advice because saya bukan pakar dalam bidang semua orang, but you are the one yang mula. But if let's say you feel like saya tidak mula PTG, saya kena jumpa 80 ratus persen dari permasalahan saya. So justifikasi berikan kepada tim dan tim akademik dan fakulti akan melakukan kepada PT. You still falls under the one seven three two. Jadi kalau dulu orang takut tidak capai sebab tidak capai gagal. Ataupun penyelaras tiba-tiba datangnya belum capai lagi itu orang kasih update, kan? Now, if you don't cannot achieve the ones the forty forty twenty, you will be categorized under the one seven three two. One seven three two semua orang dia buat sebab buktinya seratus seratus, right? So sebab laporan kita, sebab laporannya sudah berbeza. Dulu laporannya mesti ada, laporannya sekarang. Kita ada berapa persen kursus PTG, berapa persen kursus PTS. Ia begitu. So we are going to flexible education. So instead of kita bagi student kita flexible, kita as lecturer juga perlu diberikan flexibility itu, kan? So it depends on. Oh iya, saya saya sebelum saya tidak, saya sebelum saya pun tidak setuju tu dengan skandal tu. So itu kita lah achieve, not achieve. Rasa sedap ke hati ataupun lebih bagus kalau sistem itu ini cita-cita saya lah kalau seperti kalau boleh dibuat oleh BMDK kita login saja dia bagi tahu apa yang kita boleh capai dia ada top up jadi misi dia bagi tahu kita jadi itu saya punya mana-mana cita-cita yang sudah diminta kepada JTMK dan ya kita tertaklu sebab kita di e-learning kita ni berdiri tengah-tengah dengan JTMK siapa lagi dengan BPA dengan BSM So when it comes to e-learning, we may, we may, we try to help you to solve the problem, but we have to work with other person yang berhubungnya ke the system. Okay. Betul nak satu minit sebelum jam dua belas, maka dengan ini wabilah itu topik kalau tidak ya. Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. Okay, barang sih betul macam ni. Saya rasa itu ke kalau ada masalah lagi, you still can ask. Actually, pakar yang ada di area sini. Um, dan siapa yang datang kepada bengkel nanti, kita belajar yang lebih baik banyak lagi sebenarnya.
Oke, itu saja. Terima kasih atas perhatian.